Welcome Saturday afternoon to Bedford, Massachusetts. Paul Walsh Field today, the Brockton Boxers at one and five take on the New Bedford Whalers at two and four. Leo Genitasio along with the Brockton legend, Orlando Galvo, the postman, Big Mike Simmons on the production. Orlando, this is a rivalry going back to 1990 with the formation of the big three. Brockton's most heated rival, maybe outside of Zavarian. During the 90s, they were five and five with both teams winning multiple Super Bowls, Brockton three, New Bedford two. Uh, both teams nationally ranked at times during that time. But since then, since about 2000, this has been a series dominated by the boxers. New Bedford with three wins over the boxers since 2000, 2010, 2013, and 2018. But talking to Tommy Toppy, the, uh, the school uh, uh, athletic director, he's saying they're playing better football. What are we looking for today? Well, real quick, you, you can put the records aside. You know when Brockton and uh, New Bedford get together, that uh, doesn't matter, right? We know both teams are going to come out and play today. But what are we looking for uh, for New Bedford, obviously, is, um, you know, a young team like Brockton. Um, they, they're powered by uh, – a Division One commit itself by Anthony, uh, help me with his name. Diakate. Diakate. So uh, pretty good size. I was on the field. I saw him. He's, he's a good athlete. size. So uh, they they're they're playing better and they got the uh, win, uh, which that usually don't happen against BR. Last week they shut out BR. I believe seven to nothing. So I have their uh, their schedule here. They have uh, they're two and four Orlando. Opening season loss to a good Taunton team, 41-0. They lost to Barnstable, 45-20. They won, beat Attleboro 33 to six, lost to Lincoln Sudbury 16 to six, lost to Lawrence 20 to 19, and we, like you said, they went into Bridgewater last week. Never an easy place to play, no matter what Bridgewater's record is, and they beat them seven nothing. So we see some common opponents on the schedule: the Barnstable, the uh, uh, Lincoln Sudbury, and the Lawrences. And the scores are—I mean, you really can't compare scores because obviously the games are different, but the games are relatively close. So I'm thinking today. We're going to come in probably with a very, very tough game for the boxes, but they're going to grind it out. The yeah. boxes come in today at 1 and 5. Losses to Bounceable 49 14, Franklin 21 13, Lincoln Sudbury in overtime 29 21 to over up the season before the boxes got their first victory against Lawrence 14 to 7. The last couple weeks on the road, they played some really good football teams. Losses to Andover 50 to 20, where the boxes had a halftime lead. And last week to Pinkerton, 42 to 13, the best team in New Hampshire. What have we seen from Brockton over the past couple of weeks, Orlando, that makes you think they can come in and get a victory today? Well, I mean, obviously they, they've been playing better. I mean, it's like kind of like an up and down. Um, uh, Pockets of good football for, for Brockton, right? And um, and I'm gonna be honest. I, I uh, what I'm seeing is you know a team that needs uh, that needs to play better end the season. Um, you still have a little bit of shot to make the playoffs. So I expect them, uh, the fact that they're playing New Bedford, it's, it's a rival game. I expect them to come out here and, and give their, their best effort of the season. Um, uh, with uh, New Bedford, uh, Mark DeBrittle, he's telling me that, that they were missing six starters last, last week when they played at uh, BR, and they still managed to, to get that victory as well. And um, like you said, they're powered by uh, Diakate. Um, and then they split uh, at quarterback, they split uh, uh, snaps between uh, – Waters, uh, number 13. Well, and, he's out. Um, he's injured. He's out. Okay, so Noons is, is the running back, and uh, along with uh, Jaron Goodine, if you remember that name, Goodine, yes, that's the son of uh, the legendary uh, New Bedford uh, Jojo Goodine. Um, and tw uh, 22 uh, is their starter, A.J. Rivera, uh, senior. Uh, he will be the starter. He will be splitting uh, – he will be splitting shifts actually with 13, yes. So what, what, Bedford what? comes in with an offensive line that is all underclassmen, Orlando. Uh, the tackles will be Thiago de Cruz. He's a sophomore. Devon Shields, a junior. The guards are Niall Montero, a junior. Jelani Harris, a sophomore. And Forrest Thompson's the center, is a junior. So boxes come in today again. We talked about this before, Orlando. Uh, they've had two tough games. We have seen, at the most important position, a lot of progress. Jaden Campbell with 600 yards and three touchdowns throwing on the season, another four on the ground. What have you seen from him the past couple weeks, Orlando? I, seen a, I see a kid that I'm really excited about going forward. That's what I see. Um, and he gives you pockets too, right? Remember, he's just a 14-year-old kid, um, a freshman. 
can't remember the last uh, freshman to start for Brockton High full time. We go, we go. Uh, Michael uh, Robinson. I was yeah. thinking back. Michael. Michael Robinson started as a tight end on a right. Super Bowl but, team. But in a the quarterback, late 80s. the most important. Yeah, Tommy Colombo. Yeah, Coach Tom, you got to go son. back to Tommy yeah. Colombo. I know Austin Roberts uh, got it at the end there. Um, he played he, as a sophomore. Yeah, I think yeah. Jesse Rosende, the the all time Brockton great who won championships, mm -hmm. started as a sophomore. But you're right, as a freshman quarterback since Tommy Colombo, this is about as uh, young as it gets at that position, especially in Brockton. So uh, yeah, I've, I've liked what I see with Jaden, like. I talk to a lot of people that, uh, you know, say the sky's the limit for this kid. Uh, obviously, he's only a freshman. Uh, he's taking baby steps, but I like what I see um, day by day, week by week uh, from Jaden Campbell. So Brockton running the ball has been powered by their junior tailback, Luke Turco, who's carried the ball 51 times for 285 yards, almost six yards a carry. Um, Walter Rodriguez, the senior, we saw a lot of him the last couple of weeks. He's back getting some carries at 40 carries, 148 yards, and almost four yards of carry. With the running back position, Orlando, what do you want to see today against New Bedford? Well, it's, you see a lot of rain out there. It's uh, very going to be very wet, so you got to be able to run the ball effectively. So the line, it's gonna, I think it's going to come down who runs the ball better today, right? Uh, whether it be Brockton or it be New Bedford. Uh, both have good running backs. Both sides got uh, good running backs. I see Brockton giving the ball to Turco and uh, Rodriguez quite a bit today. And, and I want to see Cam also – Try to get the ball in Cam's hands. Try to try to utilize him. I mean, he is your best player. So we've seen the past couple of weeks that we've seen Cam line up a quarterback. He's been getting the ball in jet sweeps. Obviously, Campbell looks for him first. Brockton also has a collection of junior wide receivers who've all put in their mark on some games recently. Uh, Ramel Johnson with a terrific touchdown catch at Andover. Jaden Lopes Ribeiro with a huge catch against Lincoln Sudbury. So it's just not one weapon. The boxes are capable of throwing the ball to a diverse group of wide receivers. Right. Now you talked about Ribeiro. He had a, a touchdown last week, 78-yard touchdown reception from Campbell. He shows uh, signs of br uh, brilliant as well. I feel like he, he's a, a key ingredient going forward uh, as well for Brockton. Um, and um, you have mentioned uh, Johnson. Uh, the son of uh, Richard Richard yep. Johnson. Um, he shows uh, some signs, too. You got Wooten. Jaden Wooten's also. Yep. He's really played good football. Made some, some tough catches in traffic the past couple weeks, showing a lot of toughness. Yeah, and I, and I feel today uh, it will be a great spot to might do what New Bedford's doing, mix quarterbacks, uh, Jaden. Uh, put Cam in there, let him get some snaps, you know. Uh, he's capable of taking it the distance anytime he touches the ball. So I want to see uh, a lot of, uh, you know, Cam early. You, usually we've, we've seen Cam, but we kind of see him late towards the game where you're saying, oh, this is a right. little bit too little, too late. You know what I mean? So talking to people close to the box of football program, they're, they're – feeling right now is they want to go out there and win these final five games of the season whether they get in the playoffs or not they have a real young team only a few seniors they're talking about you know finishing the season up strong that has to start today against new bedford the weather is going to be tough brockton will they be in the eye will they be in the spread if we've seen some poor snaps not a lot of them but today Protecting the football, obviously, is going to be the number one thing for the boxes. But uh, let's, let's be honest here. Coming into this game right here late in the season, we're usually not looking We're not looking for a non-playoff match. We're looking to getting better going into the playoffs. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time Brockton has started 1-5. and five. I mean, a lot of people in Brockton, you know, on the offseason uh, last year wanted a different coaching change, right? They wanted something better. Uh, I know it's Wiggins' first year, but we've yet to see um, – you know, signs of that yet. Uh, it's kind of unfair, but I'm going to call it how it is. Uh, we've yet to see that um, from Brockton, and hopefully well, it starts today. A lot of it is, what have you done for me lately? But people forget for the first 10 years of Peter Colombo's career, mm -hmm. he was ranked in the top three, if not the top five, with multiple state championships, mm -hmm. multiple Division One football players, and he played and he coached in some legendary games. But I agree with you, Orlando. It's, it's the year one of the Coach Wiggins regime. It's been a tough start but there's still a lot of football left this season where they can change it around. And then um, you hear rumblings. Uh, I talk to people, you know, I'm in Cape Cod Cafe, I'm in Brockton, and what they tell me is sometimes the grass ain't greener. And I'm like, hey, you know, it's, it's, we're not even uh, through the season yet. But this is true, right? Uh, they want uh, improvements. Uh, but let's, let's call it how it is. Uh, he's taken over a team that lost a lot of seniors. He's taken over a team that's very young, starting a freshman quarterback. 
He's taken over a team that you look at it only has one experienced varsity player that played significant uh, amount of time last year. So we got to look at, if we're going to look at it from that angle where the grass ain't greener, we got to look at it from this angle too, right? So, yeah, talking about that a little bit with the coaches before the game, going to, looking at the playoffs, Orlando, is Brockton still with the possibility of making the um, Division One state playoff? Well... Looking at if they if they make the obviously they're gonna have, if they make it, it's gonna have to be at three and five. Um, I'm looking at the power rankings. Brockton's ranked 23rd in the power rankings, and New Bedford just so, ahead of them and at 20. Talking about 27. that, New Bedford, do they they if they come up with a victory today, are they in the uh, Division One state playoff? Well, I'm a, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's very very it's gonna be very very tough. Anything is possible, like Kevin Garnett uh, yeah, says. Right. Anything's possible, but um, if I had to put uh, you know a real Emphasis on that, I would say it's going to be very, very tough for Brockton to make the playoffs. What's the top 10 playoffs. right now, Orlando? Do you have that for the state rankings for Division One? Let's if see I how do. many of those common opponents where Brockton's going to get points. So you got St. John's Prep at number one. You got uh, Zaveri at number two, Springfield Central, followed by Needham at four, Methuen um, at five. Lincoln Sudbury, Team Brockton, took to overtime um, at six. BC High, which <laughs> they have changed their, their uh, season yep, uh, from, we'll from the last that. couple of years. And you have the team Brockton played uh, uh, last week, uh, actually uh, two weeks ago, Andover, who got a big victory, by the way, yesterday against Central Catholic, uh, 22 to, to nothing, and followed by that is Central Catholic at 9. And then you got Natick, you know, a team that Brockton uh, played, yep. played the last couple of years but didn't play this year at number 10. So there's a lot of obstacles that Brockton has to leapfrog, and um, it's going to be very, very, very tough to go from 23 to 16. You look at at 16, you see a, a powerhouse Everett uh, at 16, and and you know so it's going to be very difficult to to get into the playoff and leapfrog. A lot of things going to have to happen. Well, either way, Coach Wiggins would like to get these kids playing good football heading into next season. We talk about it a lot. You got a lot of kids returning next year, but you want to have them in high leverage games, whether that's going to be a Division One state playoff or big football rival games like New, De New Bedford, Durfee, and we'll see who they play. If they don't make the playoffs, who the possibility of playing those two teams. If you come into next season, it just feels better around the, f the team when you, right. when you win football, especially in Brockton. I mean, this right. is a team that's won 800 football games over its career with 19 state championships. We're not used to winning one football game through the first two months of the season. I don't care who the coach is. Right. We're not used to being one in five late in the season either and looking at possibly not making the playoffs. That, that's rare, especially coming off a, t a team that was 9-2 and two last year. Yeah, we talked about that. Brockton did graduate a lot of good football players last year, but the feeling around the team and the feeling around the city is this team's capable of winning football games. Right. And um, if you, listen, you asked me they're one in five. I, I can I'm be a realist. I, I say they, I think they should be better than one in five, you know, but uh, they're not. The, it, like Parcel says, you are what your record says. <laughs> and the record says they're one in five. So we're about a few minutes away from game time here. New Bedford, Massachusetts, Leo Genitasio along with the Brockton legend, Orlando Galvo, the postman, Mike Simmons, on the productions. The captains will be coming out shortly. Again, we're looking at probably a football game today that's going to predominantly kept on the ground. I don't see a ton of passes, but, you know, we've seen Bill Belichick when it's snow out have right. Tom Brady throw the ball 30 times in the first half. For the most part, the, the field looks uh, like it's in great shape. Um, it's not overall pouring out here. It's like little drizzle, uh, you know. So uh, we'll see what we get here. So we're going to get ready for the national anthem. So a few minutes before game time, Leo Genitasio along with Orlando Galvo, the captain's coming out at midfield. For Brockton, we have Cameron Montero 
it looks like the junior linebacker, Ahmad Wiggins, and number 50 will be Ruben Bernard, the two-way tackle, defensive tackle. For New Bedford, we have number 52, Tayel Guzman, number seven, Zachary Nunes, number three, Anthony Diakite, number two, Desmond Brunskill, and number six would be Ed Milson Semedo. Orlando, I think today winning that toss and defer and trying to get that extra possession would certainly be key when you're, uh, you're talking about a bad weather game. Right. Uh, I think you, you want to take the ball here, set the tone, get, you know, whoever scores first obviously is going to have a huge advantage in this wet, soaky field here in uh, New Bedford. Like we said, we've, we've been coming to these football games since 1990 when this place used to be packed, but mm. those games weren't on cable a long time ago. If you wanted wow. to catch Proctor New Bedford, you'd have to travel down 140 head down here and watch the game. Correct me if I'm wrong, 1994, 95, uh, 10,000 uh Yeah, the game in folks. Brockton. That was probably the highlight of probably New Bedford football. They beat a great Brockton team in Brockton. They finished off that season with the uh, second Super Bowl led by Rudy Bulga, Shriek Mendes, and JoJo Goodine. And, you know, those are just terrific New Bedford football teams. If I'm not wrong, I think they won state championships in football, basketball, they, they, and baseball, they, back to back. Maybe one of the greatest runs in state history. I, I don't think you're ever going to see that ever being repeated. I agree. What they did in terms of uh, their athletic program, that and them two years. So Brockton has won the toss, and they will defer. They'll be kicking to the south end of the end zone. And you know, you know the Whalers, they're going to come out and play. No matter what their record is, you can throw it right out the window. They're going to come out and play. We know that. Well, we know one thing about New Bedford. They're never intimidated by Brockton. They come out, they'll be physical. Whether they have the players to match up with Brockton is another thing. But that they're always physical with Brockton, mm -hmm. and they usually play one of their better games against them. That is true. So the boxes and the Whalers set for kickoff. Walshfield, New Bedford, Massachusetts. I think we're going to get the national anthem right now. So we're a few minutes away here from kickoff. Walsh Field in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Former Big Three rivals, now the South Coast Conference rivals, Brockton Boxers and New Bedford Whalers. You know, Orlando, looking at New Bedford sideline, not the deepest mm. roster that they've usually, you know, they right. usually have pretty good numbers for football. Yeah, um, obviously they are missing some starters, but even that, uh, used to seeing a bigger, bigger uh, sideline uh, for New Bedford. Uh. Either way, they got some good looking athletes like they usually do. So Brockton has won the toss, they defer, they'll be sending out, it's usually that Danny DaCosta will be their kicker. He's done a fine job this year kicking and punting. Brockton is relatively healthy, Orlando. Uh, mm -hmm. They got a big person we talked about, Jalen Jackson, JJ Jackson, the, the big junior defensive hey. tackle who's been out a couple weeks, he's right. back today. Plugs up the middle, uh, gets to the uh, quarterback, makes a lot of tackles for minus uh, yards. A terrific so. athlete. So Good to have him back. So back deep for New Bedford will be number seven, Zachary Nunes, who is a senior. And he's back there with number 30, 
That's Jarrell Goodine, who we talked about, the son of the all-time great, legendary, maybe the best football player in New Bedford history, JoJo Goodine. Imagine that. Uh, you get one, uh, a legendary football player, and you get his son, and you hey, go, go, go out there and do what I did. That's tough to do. Yep. So it looks like the rain has kind of held up here. The field, it looks like it's in pretty good condition for the amount of rain that we've had. So Brockton will have a holder here for the ball, and that will be number seven, which is Ahmad Wiggins, the sensational junior linebacker. Danny DaCosta set to kick off. And here's the kick. It's a pretty good kick. It's down to around the 20 yard line. He's got a lot of space to the left. He heads up left side. He's got some room. He gets this move and he gets, and we're going to get a penalty. It looks like we're going to hold him. It was a pretty good return by Goodine. And the tackle was made by number 45 for the boxers. Not a good start. This is Jordan DePina, the junior linebacker who's back and hopefully healthy, who the boxers were counting on early. So there was a hole there and uh, not a good way to start it, especially in these conditions for New Bedford. That's going to back him up possibly to the 15. So the referees may do make the call. It was around the 22 and a half yard line, so they'll lose 10 yards, and that will give uh, New Bedford some tough field position to stop. The boxes, again, we'll see Messiah Pina, the left defensive end. Jordan DePina playing the right defensive end. Not too many seniors out there no. for Brockton. Nathan Jean Philippe, a, a sophomore defensive lineman out there. Number 79, Cassius Pebway. He's about 6'7, 320 starting at the defensive tackle, along with JJ Jackson. Other than DePina, the whole defensive line will be back next year. Just one senior out there for Brockton. Mod Wiggins and Lorenzo Santos, the linebackers, who have both been terrific this season. So the Bedford starts in the spread with two to the right. And we're going to get a flag. Terrible way to stop for New Bedford. I don't know if that's a delay of game or motion. So the Bedford Whale is starting out backwards so far today. Yeah. That ball will take them back to about the nine-yard line. So New Bedford will be first and 15 at about their nine. The boxed linebackers. Again, Wiggins into Santos. The corners will be number 49, Karen's Antoine, a junior. Luke Turco at safety, along with number, that is number 22. Well, that's not Christian Flaherty, so it might be a different, no, it's number 23, I apologize. So that will be Jared Mighty, the sensational sophomore. In the right corner will be number Nazer Gomes, a junior. So Brockton, well, one senior on the defense right now. So New Bedford starts out. So they have an offset in the, sh in the spread with a fullback and a tailback. Looks like he left early again. So the ball's going to go right to number seven, and that's plugged up pretty good. The running, tackle. That's a Kari Noons on the carry. The gang tackle led by, it looks like that was uh, Jalen Jackson. Yep. So we're going to go to about second and 15 for the Whalers. Not really any gain right there. Real quickly, uh, also missing uh, on defense uh, so far is 41 freshman who starts for Brockton, Ariel Maybean. So we'll get some further information on that, why the freshman's not out there, but he's, hit, he's been a real mainstay so far defensively. So New Bedford comes back out in the spread. They have twins to the left, twins to the right, and the sole running back looks to be Goodine. Rivera comes back, he takes a look, he has him over the middle, the ball's thrown deep, he has a shot. Oh, <laughs> and a terrific effort by Diakite. It was a good throw by A.J. Rivera, just over the reach of Diakite with Jared Mighty in coverage. Yeah, one-handed attempt by Diakite. Uh, just a little bit uh, overthrown right from the bat. They're looking at their big, big play guy in Diakite. Well, the Brockton secondary's been a little bit maligned. They, they're they young, but they've had some high moments. They've also had some times where they've had trouble in coverage and trouble tackling. But ja uh, Jared Mighty has been sensational at safety this season. Bedford facing a third and a very, very long at a at that nine. So New Bedford third and 15 at their own nine. They have trips to the right. One to the left would be Desmond Brunskill. 
The snap to Rivera. He rolls out to the left. He looks long. He got a little bit of room. He takes a look. He throws over the middle. Oh, and it's actually a really good throw that's in in the bottom of the hands of Anthony Diacate. Yeah, just off the fingertips. of If he caught that, that, that might have been a first down. It was really close. So, Novetta will come in to punt. The boxes will send back the junior all-purpose Luke Turco. And the boxes should have pretty good field position. So we saw that right there. We saw A.J. Rivera roll out to his left. He is a left-handed quarterback. And back to pump for the Whalers will be number two, and that will be Desmond Brunskill, the senior. He's standing in his end zone. Luke Turco around his own 40. He has the snap, and it's a perfect snap. The kick, and it's really a good kick. High end-over-end -end kick that doesn't really get a bounce, and the boxes will take over at the wrong, after New Bedford 35. Yeah, smart, so, by, smart by Luke to get away from it. You're going to have good field position. The, uh, the ball kind of just died right there at the 35 so, line. So Brockton will take over, first and 10, 10.44 of the first quarter. New Bedford throwing the ball twice, Orlando, in that first series. Right. So the boxes send in freshman Jaden Campbell. Looks like New Bedford stays in that 34 defense with two safeties back. Not the biggest teams. So the boxes will start out in the shotgun. The sole running back is Walter Rodriguez. Twins to the right, twins to the left. Luke Turco in the slot. The snap and the ball will go to Luke Turco. He's got room up the middle. He cuts left, he cuts inside, and that's a really good run. So the boxes will gain about eight there. Nice block that time by Cam Montero and Rodriguez to lead uh, the way for Luke. Strong pickup, possibly nine. So the box is second and one at the New Bedford. It looks like it's about the 26-yard line. Jaden Campbell gets the call from Coach Wiggins. New Bedford looks like they're 53. Niall Montero will be the nose tackle, surrounded by number 81, Jatarvis Penro. So the boxers come in the eye this time with two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left. Walter Rodriguez is a sole back. The snap will go to Rodriguez. He has a little bit of room. It's a good mm -hmm. run, and he catches the first down. Looked like New Bedford shot the gap there. Nice tackle by the Whalers, number 23, who is not on the roster. All right, sure pick up there by Rodriguez, but good enough for Brockton first down. Two hands on the ball. Looks like New Bedford has Zakari Noons at... Strong safety, he's off the field right now. Their linebacker, 23, is not on the roster. 52 is one of the captains, Tael Guzman. Guzman is a good-looking linebacker. Number nine is Jose Ayala, two senior linebackers. Their corners will be number six, Ed Milson Semedo, and number five, Kevin Font. So first and 10, the Bokters go back to the shotgun, two to the left, one to the right. Walter Rodriguez is the sole back. The snap, and the ball goes to Rodriguez. He got space up the middle. Space. He has room. He gets to the outside. And he gets, uh, he might get a flag there. Yeah, that's so a horse it, call, a tackle, no doubt about that. So you're going to get a terrific run by Walter Rodriguez. Great blocking on the left side by the boxes, which will move them inside the New Bedford five-yard line with the horse, with the unnecessary roughness. And that will be the third flag on the Whalers. So the ball's at the six, uh, so you can basically bring that ball up to the three. Brockton's going to face first and goal. Great stop by Brockton going to Rodriguez. So terrific blocking on the left side by the Boxins, and we've said his name, Devon DeVega, a few times this year. Also number 72, Jeremiah Cooper, a sophomore playing guard, anchored by number 50 for the Boxes. Ruben Bernard. So first and goal at the three. Christian Flaherty, the fullbacks in the game. Walter Rodriguez. And we're going to get offsides. Yep. Yep. So New Bedford with their fourth penalty. Wow. So the boxes offensive line would be left tackle. It looks like they have Ruben Bernard, the senior. It's actually going to be on Brock, and they're saying 73 jumped first. Okay, so we do so. have a penalty against the boxes. Tough spot for a penalty. The last thing you want to do is get a penalty. No, they did. They moved it up. It was on New Bedford. Okay, all right. Kind of fooled me there. They moved it. Uh... Henry Hank Morse is the right tackle. 73, the junior. 74, the guy, Devon DeVega, on the right side. The center is 78. Kayvon Vega, the senior. So the boxes are first and goal at about the one. And Jamie ah. Campbell is going to walk in in the quarterback sneak. So the boxes can't ask for a better start right there. Way Orlando. too easy, right? He... <laughs> Quick snap, goes to the right. No one there. Touchdown, Jaden Campbell. Brockton off to a 
Good start. Jaden Campbell has a good feel for those quarterback sneaks. He has a good feeling for where open space is. He, he did, and that time he did find the open space. Uh, no one touched him. Um, he was able to get in. So the boxes will send in number 95, Terry Montero, big defensive lineman for the extra point. Christopher Maraglia, the junior, who's done a nice job holding this year. Here's the extra point to put the boxes up by seven. The snap down, the kick, and that kick's going to be blocked. So that ball really had no chance. So at 9.04 of the first quarter, the boxes six, New Bedford Whaler zero. Right. I didn't see nothing wrong with the stat. The snap looked good, placed it down, uh, couldn't get none on the kick, and um, wasn't able to lift it. And uh, Brockton has a six nothing lead. Orlando, start. any difference for the kickers? This is grass field. Brockton has a, Brockton played in any grass fields this season? Everything's been artificial yeah. turf. I wonder how much difficulty that is for the kickers. Well, it's uh, anytime it's uh, raining out there, it's going to be slippery. No matter if you play on uh, turf or grass. So uh, obviously, I felt like the snap was good at, at that time. He just didn't have enough lift. Uh, could have been slippery. Could have slipped, but so, in any event. So the boxes with a 35-yard drive, keyed by that Luke Turco first down run for nine yards. They had a couple big runs out of Walter Rodriguez, and they capped it off with a quarterback sneak from Jaden Campbell. So the boxes will send out the kicker, number 65. Actually, 67. That's Andrew DeSantos. Thought it was Danny De Silva. There's a chance it's wrong on the roster, but if Danny, if it's wrong. We apologize, but on the roster it says Andrew Dos Santos. Back deep for the same for the Whalers will be number seven, Zakari Nunes and Gerald Goodine. No holder this time for the boxes. And the kick. And it's a really good kick. It's gonna go deep Excellent down kick. to a ball. And they're gonna let it go in the end zone. A terrific kick. Oh, you got a boot in that. Smart play by Gerald Goodine. So the Whalers will take over at their own 25 yard line. So New Bedford with a with a Sluggish start to this game. Four penalties. Um, and that's going to drive Coach DeBerto right. crazy. DeBerto was a terrific football player in the 90s for New Bedford, a wide receiver who was a part of a lot of big teams. And I'm sure he was coached by Wayne Lehamlet, mm -hmm. most successful coach from New Bedford. And that's got to drive him nuts. Yeah, eighth year here at New Bedford. Uh, great coach in DeBerto. So A.J. Rivera is going to get this, the call. He's going to come out, it looks like, in the spread. Twins to the left in the right. The sole back looks like Gerald Goodine. The first and 10, the snap. The ball goes to him. There's a little bit of room, and it's clogged yeah. up really fast by the boxes with another flag down. All right, let's see what we got here. Again, uh, that's only a gain of two yards. And I think we got a face mask against the boxes. Yeah. So that will help New Bedford. The only thing Brockton cannot do, Orlando, and they've done this, has been too many too many undisciplined penalties the past few weeks. Yeah, good call there, Leo. It is a face mask. It's Move the ball 15 yards. No, they gave him five yards. Five yards. I didn't five know yard. that okay. was even an option anymore, but that will only go five yards. So November, which you get a first down out of it. So New Bedford will send in number 23 at running back, who's not on the roster. 22 AJ Rivera taking the snap. Brockton remains. It looks like in that 42 with. It looks like they have Jared. Jaden DePina on the right side. So that goes to a 44. Two back set next to Rivera. The snap. The ball goes down. He looks. The ball gets to DePina. Good dine. He has room. That's a terrific run. Yeah, good shoot. That, that time he shot right through the hole. Uh, good stick at the end. But that's going to be a, enough for a first down for Good Eye. Looked like he had trouble handling the snap. That mm -hmm. was a big hole started up by the New Bedford line right there. So first and 10 at their own about 39-yard line. Jordan DePina playing that right linebacker spot today. Ahmad Wiggins in the middle, and it looks like number 52 is out there right now for the boxes at linebacker, which is Ty Baker. So New Bedford remains two to the left, one to the right, two backs in the backfield. Number De Goodine goes in motion. The ball's going to go to number seven, and he oh, is clogged up real fast. Big 79. Zakari Nunes, and that's eaten up by big number 79 for the boxes. Oof. All six foot seven, 330 pounds of him. Wow, did he plug that hole? They call him Cash, and he was Cash Money there. Cash Petway on the play. So he'll come off the field, get a break. Boxes will send on Ruben Bernard, the senior who plays both ways. So about second and eight, 
at their own 36 yard line. We're at 744 of the first quarter. The boxes lead 6 0. AJ Rivera in for his first game starting for New Bedford. We're going to have a singles receiver to the left, two to the right, offset in the shotgun. The ball's going to go. He keeps AJ Rivera. It goes to the outside, and he's going to get no swarmed way. up in a terrific play made by, it looks like it was Adam Ahmad Wiggins. It was eaten up by uh, Luke Turco. And Depina no. as well, 52. Depina in there. No, 52 was Ty Baker. Ty, Ty Baker today. Nice huh? job by Ty. Not getting a lot of playing time. He read that play well. So New Bedford at about third and at about 11 right now. And the Brockton defensive line has done a fine job today eating up those holes. So the Whalers, AJ Rivera gets the call from Coach DeBrito. So Ty Baker seeing some uh, action today and uh, made a good stop there. New Bedford loses three yards and facing uh, third down at about 11. So the sole back will be Zachary Nunes. Trips to the left, one to the right. A.J. Rivera in the shotgun. He has a snap. He looks back. He has time. He looks over the middle. He has a man open. Uh, and it's just a little bit underthrown. Uh, and he got hit pretty good right there. Right. The pressure came in by Pina on the left side. Uh, he had to get rid of it quick. No one there. Great coverage by Brockton. And again, New Bedford's going to punt. So New Bedford will be punting the ball the way. Fourth down and 10. Luke Turco back, shorthanded back there. New Bedford, after a penalty, gets a first down on a, a penalty and a good run, will now be punted. Number two, Desmond Brunskill back for the punt. We have one receiver way left five, Kevin Fonts, now be covered up by Karen's Antoine. There's the snap. It's good. And the kick goes off, and it's a terrific kick. And let's see if he gets a bounce, right. and the ball just dies and gets a little bit of a Brockton bounce, and they'll take over at their own 40-yard line. Another start, good starting position for Brockton to add to this lead, which would be very big here um, under the, the drizzle here at New Bedford. So we're at 622 at Walsh Field. Leo Genitasio, along with the legend, Orlando Galvo, the postman, Mike Simmons, on the broadcast. The boxers come out, and they are going to remain in the shotgun. Cameron Montero is in the slot. Ramel Johnson and Jaden Wooten are the other receivers. Walter Rodriguez is the sole back. There's Cam goes in motion. Cam gets the ball. He has some room to the outside. He cuts it up. There's a good block by Johnson, yeah. but he's going to get called for the hold. Right. They're going to get Rodriguez, uh, number three, on a hold. He's putting his hands up. Uh, who, me? Yeah, but... Uh, he didn't need to do it. Right. He just needed to stand in the way. Cam had the open space, but we're going to get a holding call. Again, Brockton shoots themselves in the foot with penalties. And it was a hold, so... No question about it. Uh, Brockton's starting to get themselves with, uh, with the penalty bug. Uh, so at the, at the point of the penalty, we'll set Brockton back 10 yards. So it'll be about first and 15, probably 16 at their own 34-yard line. Walter Rodriguez comes off. Jaden Campbell gets the call. Cameron Montero with his first carry there will be neglected, will not go on the stat sheet. So Brockton with their second penalty. Brockton comes out. It looks like they are remaining in the, shock, the spread with two receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Luke Turco is the only running back. The snap goes. Campbell fake. Luke Turco gets the ball. He has a little room yeah. up the middle. Keeps moving those legs and he'll gain about three yards. Great job defensively that time. New Bedford uh, no way to go. Gain tackling led by number 52, Tyel Guzman, for the Whalers. So we'll go to about second and 14 for the boxes. Wholesale changes. Christian Flaherty comes out. We see Ant Ramel Johnson come in. And Jaden Campbell gets the call from Coach Wiggins. So New Bedford is going to remain with that three-man. Oh, they're going to go to a four-man defensive front with two linebackers and the safeties. There's really no one back there. The safeties are in the box. And there's a snap. Looks like New Bedford yeah. jumps. So Brockton's going to gain five of those yards back on an offside by New Bedford. Yeah, I was a little bit too excited uh, to get to Campbell there. Looked like New Bedford was going to blitz there, Orlando. So Brockton gains five back. They'll be second and nine at their own 41. Brockton's yet to throw a pass. Uh, so we got two to the right, including Cameron Montero, offset backs with Jaden Campbell. 
There's the snap. He looks. He has the ball. Luke has a little bit of room. Luke gets outside with a good tackle. He has a lot of room. An attempt to tackle. And Luke Turco will gain tons of yards. So that will go all the way down to the vet for 31. It looks like a game of 30 yards from Luke Turco. Yeah, we already see what Brockton's uh, game plan is today. We're going to run it right down your throat. Stop us if you can. Big game that time by Luke Turco. A missed tackle by the Whalers will allow Luke to gain extra yards there. And Brockton will take over at the 32-yard line at 451 of the first quarter, up by six. Let's see what the boxers do here. They're going to go trips to the left, included Luke Turco, Cameron Montero, and Ramel Johnson. One to the right, Jaden Los Ribeiro. Walter Rodriguez, the sole back. The snap goes, and Walter's going to get the ball. He doesn't have a lot of room, yeah. and that's going to lose about four yards. New Bedford sniffed that one out, led by number nine, Jose Ayala. Terrific play, along with number seven, Zakari Nunes. Yeah, Ayala was having none of that that time. Great pursuit, uh, nowhere to go, uh, lost uh, of about four for Brockton. Good adjustment by the New Bedford defensive coordinator. So the boxers lose four there. We're looking at second and 14 at their own 36-yard line, and we're going to get the first time out of the game. You know, Orlando, we couldn't ask for anything more for a stop in the boxes, defensively and offensively. Right. Uh, obviously, this is a, uh, you know, Brockton's in a uh, plus territory right here. This would be a huge stop for New Bedford. You do not want to go down 14 to nothing uh, early in this game with a soaked field. Well, you know, coming into this game, if I think Coach Wiggins and his staff knew well, this wasn't going to be uh, an easy game. I think anytime you can get a two-score lead, Brockton hasn't done it all season. So right. if they can get a two-score lead and rely on the defense, who's been pretty physical today, should put them in a pretty good position. Right. Points have been very hard to come by uh, by this Brockton offense this year. There's been, like we said, there's been pockets of good football that have been, you know, at times – not so good with penalties and, uh, you know, just some mental mistakes. But, again, with a young football team, that bounced to happen. So, Brockton's going to come right out to the line at second and 14 at the New Bedford 36. Let's see if the boxers attempt to pass here. Pitt commit Cameron Montero's in the slot along with Luke Turco, who is next to him. Ramel Johnson and Jaden Los Ribeiro. Watch out for the pass here. Walter Rodriguez is the lone back. There's the snap. Campbell's going to take a look. He has a guy open. Oh, it's a terrific play. Great play. What a terrific play yeah, by number 23 from New Bedford, who's not on the roster. Yeah, he's, he, he tried to, uh, tried to hit uh, Ribeiro on a slant. And, so, um, so that's Marcus Gonsal. Gonsalves almost terrific play. went the other way with that. Great play by Gonsalves. So Third and 14 is a two-down territory. Does Brockton try to gain seven or eight yards here and then attempt to go for it, or, or do they you know, try to get the whole thing right here? So it's the same formation, the same players to the left with Jaden Los Ribeiro, the sole receiver to the right. Walter Rodriguez is the only back. There's the snap. He's back. He takes a look. He has time. He's going to throw the ball. Uh, oh, and that ball is a little bit behind Jaden Los Ribeiro. If he caught that, Orlando, that might have been a touchdown. Right, uh... I felt like that, that ball should have been caught a little bit behind him, but he, he, when, you know what they say, when it's in your hands, you got to come up with it. So let's see what the boxers do here. Do they punt? Do they try to knock New Bedford down inside their own 10-yard line? Or do they, you know, if they don't make this, New Bedford's going to have pretty good field position at their own 36. Right. So Coach Wiggins looks like he is going to go for it. He's talking to Jaden Campbell. New Bedford getting stout inside their own territory. These last three, Brockton... Uh, Attempts. Yeah, this is surprising. Fourth and uh, very long. Uh, uh, close to mid uh, 40 side, 40 and Brockton's going to go for it. So uh. they are going to go for it. Brockton will have two to the left, two to the right. Frankly, Walter I would have Rodriguez punted. is the sole back. Oh, and Brockton jumps. Yeah, I yeah. think that might have been a punt to land. Right. So now we'll probably see the punter come in. And it's a camera Montero today. So the Brockton's jump off sides for their uh, third penalty of the day. And you're right, Leo. That. Uh, Jaden was going to take that uh, uh, pooch punt. He was going to just kick it away. So Unfortunately, the they jumped. So, so the box is at 4 0 1 with a 6 0 lead. We'll see Cameron Montero back to punt. The Whalers will send back Gerald Goodine and Zakari Noons back. Cameron Montero is the punter. Let's see how the snap is on the snap. It's terrific. Cameron Montero with time, and he gets a terrific kick. Hello. That's angled over to the left, and oh, he has room if he gets upfield. Brockton, not with the. A little bit of coverage there. That was a great block, and it's a really good return by Gerald Goodine. 
Yeah. That's a good play by Goodine because that ball was curving to, towards the, the sideline. Brock uh, might have pinned him at the three, but he was able to take that out and uh, give him good yardage, a good uh, fair starting position at the 23 to so start their drive. The 40-yard punt will be returned for about 17 yards by Jarrell Goodine. New Bedford will take over at 347 of the first quarter at their, it looks like about their own 25-yard line. They're down 6 nothing. Uh, we're going to get uh, scores from out of town. The big game today is uh, CM and uh, St. John's Prep up in Danvers. So A.J. Rivera in the shotgun. He's got one back. He sends it over to Zakari Nunes, who's got a little bit of room. He gets up field and he'll ah. gain about five yards. That's a good run by Nunes. He lowered his shoulder at the end uh, and was able to get about uh, five or six yards. Good tackle by Luke Turco. So we'll give him six yards there as New Bedford gets up to about the 30-yard line as New Bedford with their third possession of the day. They had two first downs, their last drive. So some changes coming in. We'll see number six from New Bedford at Milson Semedo. I like this kid Noons, he uh, runs hard, Leo. One of the few seniors on the New Bedford team, Marcus Gonsalves comes in now. And we will get Marcus Gonsalves with Jarrell Goodine in the backfield, second and six. One receiver to the left, one receiver to the right. Yeah, We're going to get a timeout. Yeah. And New Bedford sees something. They don't want to make a change. So we're at 2.53 in the first quarter. Leo Genitasio, along with the legend from the west side to the south side, north side to the east side. <laughs> they all know Melando Galvo and the postman, Mike Simmons, on the production. Boxes come in at one and five, New Bedford two and four. But once again, when this rivalry happens, we throw away all the records. They don't really mean anything in rivalry games. All right, that was a big uh, stop that time defensively by New Bedford to keep him in the game. You yeah. saw that run by Luke. Big, it looked like Brockton was going to, you know, have something big in that drive, and it was able to shut it down and have the ball. And uh, I like the play call from Coach Wiggins on the slow drag by mm -hmm. Jordan Lips Rivero. The ball either a little bit underthrown or maybe could have made the catch. That was a touchdown if he caught it. But, you know, that's been the way Brockton's been this season. They haven't been able to put together a full game. Mm -hmm. And it's hard when you have a young team. So yeah, It's going to be hotter when it's wet out there, too. Looks like the rain is cleared. It's a little foggy out there right now. The rain has cleared up a little bit. The boxes, the boxes come in with their same, looks like their 43 defense with the same linebackers the same. New Bedford will remain in the shotgun with A.J. Rivera with, with an offset in the eye. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Now a Smith. Now the ball's going to go. AJ Rivera. Oh, it. oh, and a terrific play. Jackson, how you do? We've talked about him all year when he's healthy. He is a difference maker, yeah. a potential Division One football player, Jalen Jackson. You talk about how you doing. My name is Jalen Jackson, back after missing a couple weeks, and he's making his presence felt today already. He's been special since he's been younger, Orlando. I've seen him since midget football and he's just a football player great looking football player Six too two, it's 225 235 and he's just a football player so the boxes uh, will set the whalers back six new bedford will be third and nine they've attempted a few passes today and rivera's shown that he can make the throw they're gonna go twins to the left twins to the right with the slot receiver uncovered right now the ball goes over rivera comes back he has time he looks he has him deep he throws it and look <laughs> durko with the interception Give me some Luke Turco. No way to throw the ball. Perfectly positioned for the interception. The Brockton sideline erupts. Brockton takes over. So good scouting by the boxes right there. Looked like they know the route was coming. AJ Rivera with a really good throw. But Luke Turco, he just went up there and got it over Jarrell Goodine. So the boxes will take over at their 45 for their third possession of the day. They're up 6 nothing. What a great defensive play by Luke Turco. Able to come down with the ball as well. Brockton takes over, close to midfield. Again, trying to add to this 6-0 uh, lead. So the boxes come out at their own 45. Jaden Ribeiro lopes to the right. Two to the left. They got all, two running backs next to Campbell. Rodriguez and Turco. The snap. They look for the – New Bedford looks to blitz. Brockton looks like Campbell is making an adjustment. There's the snap. He looks. Walter Rodriguez has room. He gets outside. He keeps moving his legs. And you know what? He'll gain a yard. And, oh, could have been another late hit there. No, I think uh, the momentum. Uh, and, he, and he took his arms off uh, him, too. Yeah, the momentum 
dragged him out, out of bounds with the, with the ball handler. So good defense by the senior captain, Anthony Diacate, caught him there on the sideline with help from Jose Ayala. So New Bedford has made some adjustments defensively. So second down at about 10, no gain right there. The box is at 154 of the first quarter. They're going to remain in the same formation with Cameron Montero, Ramel Johnson, and that looks like Jaden Wooten. Twin backs next to Jaden Campbell. There's the snap. He looks. He has time. Luke Turco. It's a fake, and Campbell yeah. keeps it. And that looked like it was just like an option that Campbell kept it and saw something. He didn't hand the ball off to Turco, and he doesn't gain anything. And if it did, it was a short yard. So New Bedford is stout again there right defensively. Yeah, they, they they fooled me, but I'll tell you what, they did not fool the Whalers. Nice tackle by number 51, Devon Shields, the junior, with a really good play right there. The nose tackle again is Thiago de Cruz. And I might add, the rain is picking up um, sure is. here in New Bedford. So the box is at 39. If they're on about 45 and a half yard line, New Bedford making some changes as boxes will send in the play through Coach Wiggins to Jaden Campbell. The rain drops are really coming down right now. So the Brockers remain in the eye. One receiver, double tight ends. The ball's going to go to Walter Rodriguez. Oh. He has met right away. Hello, like, how you doing? Yep, like Jackson, I believe his Ayala was having none of it. Great tackle. Jose Ayala with a terrific tackle. So the boxes will send out Cameron Montero as the rain picks up, and we're going to see a... Probably a smash ball football wow. right now. Well, that, that Jackson hit set the tone because both teams is feeding off that hit that Jackson had a couple plays ago. New Bedford does not have a deep roster, but the guys they got playing can play football. So Cameron Montero back as the punter. The snap is fine. Cameron gets the ball. And it goes a little bit uh, off the side of his foot. New Bedford should take over. Pretty good field. A good boxer bounce. Great bounce. And it's recovered by Hank Moss. So the Whalers will take over at their own 29. We're at about 16 seconds of the first quarter. Leo Genitasio, along with the Brockton legend, Orlando Galvo, the postman, Mike Simmons, on the production. Uh, we're seeing some hitting out there the last couple of series, aren't we? It's been a physical football game. The boxes mm -hmm. and the Whalers since 1990. What's this, the 34th edition? Brockton remains. It looks like that defense is going to remain the same in that 43 base. Diacate to the right, two backs in the backfield. One receiver to the left, A.J. Rivera. The ball goes back. The ball's going to go to Jared Goodine. He has a little bit of room. It's a good run. run. Watch out. He has more than a little room, and he could be gone. He's down at the left at 40, the 30, the 20, and that's a terrific run. He's still on his feet. What a run by Goodine. Was able to shut it off a tackler out to the races. New Bedford in the red zone, and boy, did he look like the dad on that run. Mr. Those, Goodine. Those high legs moves, the kicking. Mm -hmm. And Brockton missed two tackles right there. Game-saving tackle, touchdown-saving tackle, I should say, by Luke Turco. And we'll head to the end of the first quarter at Walsh Field. The Brockton box is six. The New Bedford Whale is zero. back here to Walsh Field, New Bedford High School. The Whalers in the boxes, 6-0 Brock at the end of the first quarter. The last play, the biggest of the game for the Whalers. Jarrell Goodine goes nearly 60 yards to the Brockton 15 with the boxes. Defense is going to be tested, Orlando. Yeah, that was a, uh, a great tackle at the end. Uh, great run. And New Bedford in position to possibly take the lead here in the second quarter. So the boxes, uh, the Whalers come out in the shotgun. Two backs to the left and right. 
A.J. Rivera with a snap. The ball's going to go to good. Oh, that's a wide open uh, hole and a terrific tackle yeah. by Ahmad Wiggins that saves a touchdown. Great tackle by Ahmad, but. Uh, Seven yards. Still able to get uh, about four yards. Sigari Noons on the carry right there. So, yeah, he'll gain four yards right there. Second and six at the Brockton 11. Nice play call by the Wales right there. The fake to the right and Zakari Noons with a big hole that was saved. Uh, touchdown by Ahmad Wiggins. We've said his name all year defensively. Oh, Coach DeBrittle at the beginning, uh, before the game, told me he likes his backs, and you see why. So the Whalers, second and six at the Boxer 11. A.J. Rivera in the shotgun. There's the snap. The ball's going to go to Gerald Goodine again. He has a little bit of room. And he'll gain about three yards. He'll get down to about third and two at the Boxer 7. At 11 minutes of the second quarter. He could have easily been tackled uh, two yards shorter. He was able to cut it in a little bit and get extra yards and set up a good third, possibly two down uh, situation here for New Bedford. For as tough as the footing is, I can assume the tackling is just as hard with the wet shirts, Orlando. Correct. So the Whalers at third and two at their own, at the boxer, eh, six-yard line. Brockton makes a change. Let's see what New Bedford does. They remain in the shotgun. The two backs remain the same. Looks like it's Marquis. Well, three backs next to Rivera. Marquis Gonsal spreads out to the right. The backs, good dine. Yeah, New yeah, Bedford. Get time yeah, the Brit, uh, New Bedford was a little confused there. The Brittle saw it. And he said, you know what? Let's just uh, take a timeout and talk about this. New Bedford calls a timeout. Yeah, they might have had too many men in the backfield right there, which would have got them a penalty. No. The Whalers now talking it over. The boxes at third and three defensively. I don't think New Bedford's going to throw the ball, Orlando. Let's see what Brockton does defensively. Maybe shoot some gaps, try to make a New Bedford on a negative play here and force a fourth down play where you have to force them to throw the ball. Well, if you're New Bedford right now, you ask yourself, why would we even bother throwing the ball? You right. run the ball pretty good. You're getting good yardage. Uh, so. so Coach DeBrito talking it over with his junior or senior quarterback. New Bedford's starting quarterback this season was uh, Waters, Sean Waters, who's been injured for a while now. So Brockton talks to Coach Weaver, the defensive coordinator, who's done a fine job today. So third and two with the Brockton six. The backs will be, uh, it looks like Goodine, and that looks like it's Marcus Gonsalves. So the snap. And there's room, and Goodine has the ball, and there's a lot of room there. And he'll get the first down. So I'm surprised we didn't see more defensive tackles there, Orlando. A lot of space there just for four down linemen for New Bedford to, to gain yardage right there. All right, not much, but uh, just enough, enough to get the first down. Nice, uh, he picked his way a little bit. Uh, Good vision. Yep, to get really, that. Really wasn't touched until the first down. So first and goal for the Whalers at the box of five, maybe the four and a half. He remains in the shotgun with Gerald Goodine and Marcus Gonsalves. In the ball, there's the ball, Goodine has the ball, Rivera uh, keeps it, he gets to the outside, and he'll score a touchdown. So a nice play call by the Whalers right there. The fake to Goodine, and Rivera keeps it, he goes untouched in the end zone, and New Bedford's an extra point away from taking the lead. Right, everybody went towards Goodine, and then uh, Rivera says, thank you very much, left side, uh, untouched in the end zone, we are tied. So the Whalers will re attempt the extra point by Dresden Brunskill, the senior, we're at 6'6 six, six at 9.49 of the second quarter. Brockton had their chance to land. They're up by two scores, and they've let New Bedford back in this game. So Brunskill will be back for the kick. Here's the snap. The ball down. And that ball's not even going to be close either, I don't think. It won't be. So we're going to be at 6'6 six, six of the second quarter. Right. That was a bad snap. It was a high snap. Uh, by the time he placed it down, the kicker had no chance. It was short. We're tied at six. So terrific adjustments by Coach DeBrito right there offensively. They saw some stuff that wasn't working. They did a little motion there, some fake handoffs with the backside of the backfield, and Brockton's going to have to come back and make some adjustments to stop that. Right. You take away that long run by Turco. New Bedford, since the Brockton uh, went up 6 nothing, has been able to neutralize Brockton. Brockton really, uh, the yards have come very, very hard. So now DeBrito, uh, Coach DeBrito for New Bedford has made an adjustment. We'll see what uh, Jermaine Wiggins can do to make uh, his adjustments uh, going forward. Once again, we're going to get Cameron Montero the ball. We'll see. He 
touched the ball one time and right. had it called back on a 10-yard gain. So New Bedford will kick away to the boxes. Back deep, we'll see the sophomore Casey Rhodes, senior Cameron Montero. The up guys will be Ahmad Wiggins and Ramel Johnson. The uh, Whalers. Very shocked that uh, Kim is yet to, uh, you know, run in these conditions. Uh, you know, Lisa put him back there kind of like in the Wildcat. I'm shocked that it hasn't happened yet. Now that ball fell. They're going to probably have to hold that. So the ball goes off the tee. The boxes seek to gain momentum back right here. I wonder in Orlando if there's any more scores if they'll go for two. Mm. That's a good point. So here's the kicker. It's Anthony Diakite. The kick is really good. It's going to be the up man, Ahmad Wiggins. Oh, it's Ramel Johnson. I apologize. He has some room. He heads up field. And he gains a couple yards, and he goes down. So not bad field position. A good pursuit by the Whalers. Tackle by number 21, Lennox Brunskill, the sophomore. So the boxers take over, and let's see what Coach Wiggins does to make adjustments here. New Bedford is really taking away that speed sweep, adding uh, an extra player to the right defensive end where there's just not enough blockers to overtake the tacklers. So Brockton, first and 10 at the 30. They are going to remain um, in the shotgun. Christian Flaherty, the junior H-back, along with Walter Rodriguez. Three receivers, two to the left. Cameron Montero in the slot. There's the snap. The ball's going to go to Walter. He does have a little room. Terrific tackling by, Walt, by Christian Flaherty. So eight-yard game by Walter Rodriguez. Keyed by Christian Flaherty's block. Right, nice block that time by uh, Christian to open up uh, Rodriguez uh, on the left side. He was able to get about five yards. So the boxers with a healthy gain on first down. They're up to about the New Bedford 35 yard line. Jaden Campbell gets the call from Coach Wiggins. We're at nine minutes of the second quarter. The boxers and the Whalers are tied up. Jaden Campbell remains in the shotgun. The two backs remain the same. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. There's the snap. Walter Rodriguez got a little bit of room. He slips, but that's a terrific run by Walter. No dancing right there. Hit the hole hard, and he should be close. Let's. Well, they're going to move him back about. Uh, they're moving him back a half a yard, so about third and about a half a yard from the New Bedford 39. And Jaden Campbell, that he that ball was almost fumbled off the snap. He was able to control it and give it to uh, Rodriguez off the snap. That would have been trouble right there. He's got really good poise for yeah. a freshman. We've talked about that all season. So, oh, they're in the they're in the shotgun at third and a half. Watch out for Luke Turco here. We'll see what happens here. There is. There's a snap. Turco's going to get the ball, and he doesn't get that, Orlando. Yeah, I think he, that so last lunge, he might have got that. Ooh, I don't know. Yes, so they did. are going to give it to him. I would have liked to see the QB sneak there. All right. Uh, so Brockton will get uh, a little momentum there. They're going to get a first down at the 40. As Luke Turco keeps those legs moving. moving. The tackle was made by uh, number two, Desmond Brunskill. Yeah, that last lunge by Luke was good enough for uh, to move the sticks. So we're at eight minutes before halftime. The Boxers and the Whalers are tied up at six. Brockton remains in the shotgun. The backs remaining Christian Flaherty along with Luke Turco, the two juniors, with the freshman quarterbacks. Two receivers to the right, one's to the left. Campbell in the pistol. Looks like there's an adjustment. Flaherty changes sides. New Bedford in the 52. And we're going to get probably a timeout. We're going to get, uh -huh. no, we're going to get a delay of game. Tough penalty again there. So, yeah, the, de the delay of game, we're going to set Brockton back five yards. In this weather, Orlando, any negative yardage really hurts. Right, and I, I just don't understand why the play, the play, uh, you get a first down, uh, the play's taking so long to come in. No, he, that, uh, that was in on time. Right. Jaden made adjustments okay. at the line, right. and that was more on the freshman quarterback than it was on Coach Wiggins. Right. So, Jaden Campbell, first and 15 at the 35. The lineup's the same, two to the left, one to the right. There's the snap, the ball, and there's a fumble. And that's going to go to New Bedford. So he never had that ball, and it goes right into New Bedford's hands, and the Whalers are going to take over at the Brockton 31. Well, we saw a couple plays ago. Jalen Campbell was able to hold the ball, give it uh, Rodriguez. Bad time, uh, he couldn't save Brockton. That yep. ball fell right into right New into Bedford. And um, was able to get oh, the they ball. Are, they, that looked like New Bedford had it, but I don't know what the call is. So Brockton is... So we're waiting for the call. It looked like New Bedford uh, retain, uh, took over possession there, but they're going to give it to Br Well, that's a, 
We didn't see it. We don't have the replay, I don't think. But it looks like Brockton ended up with the ball at the bottom of that. It looked like the ball landed right in the hands of number 52. I, I don't know what they're calling. Tyrell but Guzman. But Brockton will take advantage of it. That looked like uh, 52 grabbed that ball. And the New Bedford coaches are furious. He may have taken that ball and tried to right. run back and fumbled it at Lando. Right. So it's going to be first and 15. It was New Bedford had the ball and turned it back over as 52 tried to make a play out of it and fumbled it back. So first down for the boxes. Well, there's no way they're saying he was down, but there's no way he was down. The ball was landed in the hands of Tyel Guzman. Right. We got to get uh, that, exactly what happened down the field. It happened so quick. Well, the, but it looked like the New Bedford, uh, the ball was right in New Bedford. Uh, New Bedford coaching staff is irate, uh, and I don't blame him. That right. doesn't look like that was the correct call. We've been coming down here for 35 years, Lando. Right. This might be the first time we agree with a, with a referee decision down here. Right. So Jaden Campbell remains in the shotgun, second and 15. The running backs remain the same. The rain is coming down. Campbell, the freshman, gets the snap. The ball goes to Turco, and he's not going to have much, but he keeps those legs moving for about a four-and-a-half-yard game. So the boxes, after losing five yards, they will be at about third and about 16, and we have a whaler down holding his shoulder. In New Bedford, not with the deepest staff, deepest uh, roster, what a big turn of events here. Uh, New Bedford coaches are still irate about the call, uh, which we haven't got no confirmation on. Just looked like to me the ball went right in uh, the whaler's, uh, right in his hands, and it, I, I felt like that should have been New Bedford's ball. So New Bedford with the player down, we didn't get his number. The Brockton will go over and talk to Coach Wiggins, third down at 17 after the penalty and the loss of play on the fumble. The boxers and the whalers at Paul Walsh Field, 6'6". Six, six. At 7-12 of the third quarter, Leo Genitasio along with the legend Orlando Galvo and the postman Mike Simmons on production. Orlando, what Brockton uh, right now, it looks like this could be a game where one more score could win the game. I, I, you'd like to see them protect the football and maybe play some uh, field position here. Right. you got to be careful here. you got third and long. You might want to, you know, Run that ball, see what you get, punt it away. Maybe you get a first down off a long, a long carry. But so the Bedford injury is the senior captain, Tyel Guzman. He's been terrific all day yeah. today. Let's hopefully he's okay. Yeah. He went down holding that shoulder. Hopefully it was just a stinger. Yeah. So in, for, in the Bedford at that position will be number 28, Jaheim Sanders, who is a sophomore. The Bedford just as young as Brockton out there. Mm -hmm. They uh, according to Coach DeBrito, Mark DeBrito is. Uh, they have all underclassmen both on the offense and defensive line. So the Whalers looking to get the ball back at third and 16. Brockton comes right out. The sole running back will be Walter Rodriguez right. with two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. Let's see if Brockton throws the ball. In the shotgun, and we're going to get another penalty. And Cameron Montero uh, Probably a is, warning. warning oh, they're, nope, they're going to mark it back yeah. five yards. Cameron Montero lined up right. offsides. And again, Cam Montero away. Uh, almost like playing decoy away from the play. Um, Another really inexcusable yeah. penalty, Orlando. Six yeah. games into the season, this shouldn't be happening. But the boxes and the, the whalers in the boxes both with an abundance of penalties today that have hurt their football teams. So the boxes at third and 21. Let's see, maybe a screen pass here, or just a little handoff, and punt the ball back. The formation remains the same. Twins to the left and right. Jaden Campbell in the shotgun, yeah. and Brockton jumps off sides again. So five more yards with Devin DeVager and Henry Morse both moving at the same time. Leo, this is this is the time where you just call a timeout. I know, you have to call. Uh, uh, you got to call a timeout here and get your team under control because this is this is getting a little ridiculous. Well, we're also giving away field position right here. Again, it's inexcusable penalties that shouldn't be happening six games into the season. So the box is at third and twenty-six. We're probably just going to see a little handoff here and pump the ball away. Six thirty-two of the second quarter. The boxes and the Whalers were tied at six. So Jaden Campbell's going to be into the, well, we're going to get another timeout, I believe. Just like you said, Orlando, or is it an official's timeout? So we're going to get maybe an equipment timeout for, new boy, for the Whalers. Number two's coming off the field. That's, that's Dresden Brunskill, and they are going to get Zachary Nunes back in the game. So we're going to get Twins, left and right. Jaden 
Campbell in the eye with the sole back. I'm sorry, it was Walter Rodriguez. The one back back there. There's a snap and it's gonna be a handoff. He almost didn't have that one either. Yeah. So the boxes are just barely hanging on for dear life right now, just trying to get the handoff in. Yeah, there's that guy again, Ayala, having a great game. Uh, was able to make the tackle. Brockton in a punting situation with a fourth and like forever. New Bedford handling the field conditions better yeah. than the boxes right, right now. Right now, so yeah. Back to punt will be Cameron Montero. Back deeper, Jarrell Goodine and Zakari Nunes. Both of them have been terrific today. Yeah, watch out for uh, Goodine here. Ahmad Wiggins, the protector. Ramel Johnson. And Brockton tries to make a change. And they do not have enough guys on the field, so. Brockton making some changes. They're sending a guy off the field. They're all, Brockton's gonna have to take a timeout. Jesus. They're just. They're just, you know, they're not organized right now. And they're going to have to take a timeout because they have too many guys on the field, the special teams. So Brockton gets it straightened out. Cameron Montero is back. And they have to take a timeout. Yeah, you can't go right to the line of scrimmage. Brockton special teams are in shambles right there. Going to drive their special team coach nuts. I'm sure he goes over that all week. Got to drive the whole coaching staff nuts right now. Um, you see Coach Riggins over there shaking his head. Yeah. So we're at 5-19 of a 6-6 game. Brockton, you know, I'm thinking over there in the huddle right now, the last 10 minutes have not gone their way. You just want to settle things down with a young football team. That's it. Just settle down. You know, things are happening, not going in their way right now. but uh, They're not losing. Yeah, it's 6-6. You know, you got uh, a lot of football left to play. Five five minutes uh, and 19 left here in the in the second. So just regather your thoughts. Uh, we gather the plan and uh, make some adjustments, and let's get this uh, ball rolling here. So Brockton comes out. Let's see if they have everything organized on special teams here. The deep backs for the Whalers remain the same. Gerald Goodine, and that will be uh, Zachary Nunes. Cameron Montero is the punter. Brockton needs a good snap here from Hank Morse. And Mob Wiggins is the protector. There's the snap, it's perfect. Montero with a decent kick. Let's see, they could. there's the fair catch, and he That's fumbles it. And it is recovered, wow. Huh. New Bedford alertly covered by Zakari Nunes. And Jarrell Goodine looks like he was shaken up right there, right. holding his wrist. No, that's Marquis Gonsalves, I apologize, right. who's holding his wrist. Good job by Nunes to stomp right in that ball and avoid danger because if Brockton gets that ball there after everything that's ha transpired, you got to, you know. So the Whalers will take over at about their 45, 46-yard line in a 6-6 game. A.J. Rivera has done a fine job today in his first start. Managing the ball, handing the ball off. He's done a nice job. So the Whalers come out with Zakari Nunes as the only back. Trips to the right, one to the left. The boxes remain in a 52 with Jordan, Jordan, Jordan DePina to the right. There's a snap. Zakari Nunes with not much room. And that is, you know, cleared up pretty nicely by that looks like, again, big number 79 for the boxes. Oh, it's clogging up Cash there. Petway. Yep. Cash Petway. Cash Petway. So second and eight for the Whalers at 4.55 of the second quarter. Quick, quick scoring update up in uh, Danvers uh, at halftime. CM and prep, 0-0. Zero, zero. So we're back here at Paul Walsh Field where it really matters, the boxes and the Whalers. A.J. Rivera in the shotgun. Zakari Nunes is the sole back. Trips to the right, one to the left. There's the snap, and he's back. He's looking to throw, and he got done. He looks down at the receiver. Oh, Whoa. that's a nice play. Jared Mighty did it once again with a right. terrific play. Great coverage. Uh, nowhere to throw that ball uh, was going to fit in there anyways. Uh, Mighty was able to deflect it away. Sophomore Jared Mighty. And New Bedford faces a third in about eight. Desmond, Desmond Brunskill, the tall, looks like he's about 6'5 receiver. What a great effort right there. Yep. So third and nine. The box is looking to get the ball back with uh, a little bit of time left here in the second quarter. A.J. Rivera remains in the shotgun. Zakari Nunes is a sole back. Trips to the right, one to the left. The box is in about a 52 defense with Jordan DePina out in the right. And one of, we're going to get another penalty. I think Brockton jumped off sides while he did that. Mm -hmm. Neutral zone, it looks so like. So that's another re yeah. really bad penalty by Brockton. They lined up in the neutral zone. Too much confusion uh, uh, with Jackson and um, Cash over there. Just another inexcusable penalty by the boxers. So they're going to give the Whalers six free yards right there. Instead of third down and long, right. it's third down and about three for the Whalers. Where the Whalers possibly was facing a, a passing situation now, uh, you know, 
I can get the uh, the, run, the run here. So third and three for the Whalers at the Brockton 47. AJ Rivera in the shotgun. There's the snap, and he looks, and he kept, and he's got room, and he's going to get a first down, and he's going to gain a lot of yardage. And a nice tackle by Jared Mighty. So the Whalers take advantage of the penalty. A nice play call, and they're gaining a lot of yards on the Brockton left-hand side right there. Great pay, play call, and beautifully done by uh, Rivera as well. He waited to the guy... Uh, uh, to come towards him, was able to flip it to uh, Noons, and Noons was able to get good yardage, and New Bedford's moving here. So the Whalers at first down at the Brockton 35, taking advantage of the Brockton right side right there the last few drives. So let's see who the running back is. That was Zakari Noons. We're going to see Jared Goodine along with the Zakari Noons, the senior. A.J. Rivera in the shotgun, first down, four minutes left. And there is, he got the ball, he's got room, and he's got hits that hole hard. And he's going to gain about five yards. A little misdirection once again. The boxers are failing to pick up on that. Nice play. They thought Noons was getting the ball. No way. Gives it to Good Eye. Good Eye shoots through the hole and gets a couple yards. Uh, about so, four. So about three and a half, four yards. Second and seven at three minutes. Under four minutes left in the second quarter. New Bedford driving, looking for the go-ahead score. At the 31-yard line of Brockton. A.J. Rivera has done a fine job today in his first start handling the football. Jarrell Goodine is a sole back. Zakari Noons is off the right side. There's the snap. Goodine's going to have it. A.J. Rivera keeps it. He has ah. room. And once again. Great run that time. Very patient. Cut it out. Cut it in. Was able to make a good yardage out of it. And now we're facing about a third and about two. New Bedford offensive line has done a nice job these past few series. And they've controlled the football game since that Brockton touchdown. Yeah. So third down and one at the, New Bed, the Brockton 31 and a half yard line. New Bedford looking for the go-ahead score. We're at 3:13 of the second quarter in a 6-6 football game. In the shotgun with two backs to the left and right. There's the snap, and the ball goes to Zakari Noons. And yeah, uh, nice job by Jalen Jackson once again. <laughs> and that looks like Jared Mighty in there helping him out. Oh right. no, that's number 52. I apologize. Baker. Ty Baker coming in for the second tackle of the game. Nice job by the boxers. Yeah. And they, they hold New Bedford. Now it looks like it's going to be about fourth and two, Orlando. Yeah. At this, 235. Huge play today. This is, this is a, a huge play here um, as we wind towards the end of this uh, first half. This would be a big stop by Brockton right here. Watch A.J. Rivera on the keeper here. He's done a nice job holding on to the ball and gaining yardage. So they have one back, which is Zakari Noons. A.J. Rivera trips to the right, one to the left. Fourth down and two. And the boxes, I think, will use. Were they losing their last time out? In fact, they did. So Coach Weaver, Coach Shelby talking to the troops at fourth and two. Two minutes and 14 seconds left. Paul Walshfield, Leo Genitasio, along with the Brockton legend, Orlando Galvo. The postman, Mike Simmons, on the production. The boxes and the Whalers in a 6-6 game in a downpour down in New Beige, Massachusetts. Right. Uh, Weaver is, senses that this could be a big, big stop just before the half. He's gathering the troops. Let's talk about it and uh, try to put an effort here to stop New Bedford's uh, surgeons as they're moving towards the end zone. So Brockton will play Durfee and homecoming next week. They will have Bridgewater Rainham on Thanksgiving Day. We don't know if they'll be in the playoffs, but if not, they'll have two uh, non-playoff games. I believe New Bedford still has Dartmouth and Durfee left, and they will have either playoff games or non-playoff games. They'll gain a lot of points today with a victory over Brockton with the Brockton's opponents, I believe. Right. So New Bedford comes in. They're going to go right to the line of scrimmage. Their offensive line, predominantly under Claflin, has done a nice job today. Fourth down and about two. So here we go. This could be big. A.J. Rivera in the shotgun. Zakari Noons is in the eye right behind him. And it looked like uh, they moved. Yeah, they AJ Rivera's going to keep it. He's going to try to get to the outside. Nowhere. And Brockton does a terrific job. Luke Turco finish it off. Having none of it. Big stop by Brockton just before the half. So I like the AJ Rivera keeper, but they were better going to the other side. They went to right. the Brockton left side yeah. there. Right side, I apologize, where Luke Turco was. So Brockton will take over a pretty good field position. 207 of the second quarter. Boy, did Luke Turco uh, lay the lumber just to, at the end of that play on Rivera. I, I believe New Bedford tried the same play they, they, they had um, when Brockton got that penalty. They were facing 33, but this time Brockton was having none of it. Ty Baker held him up there, and then Luke Turco finished it off. So the boxers take over at their 31. 
6'6", they're in the shotgun. Walter Rodriguez is the sole back. Twins to the left, twins to the right. Jaden Campbell in the shotgun. There's the snap, and he'll look. He'll try to get the ball to Cam, and he does. Child Cameron here. Montero with some room. And Cameron Montero will gain 11 yards with the flag down again. Yeah, that's coming back, unfortunately. Oh. So the Brockton cannot yeah. get anything going since that first touchdown. Once again, the penalties and the mistakes are killing the ball. Oh, oh they put picking up the flag. So we apologize. There will be no flag there, but either way, the Brockton's are gaining 11 yards there. Well, what are they? They waved the flag off, so why are they walking backwards? Man, we see some uh, some weird stuff happening here in New Bedford sometimes, but uh, so we'll get a first down. The box is at their 42. Coach Wiggins getting the ball into Cameron Montero, who's off the field. It looks like he's a little shaken up. The box is with all their junior receivers with two backs. It looks like Luke Turco and Walter Rodriguez. Clock is running here for Brockton. We're at 146 of the second quarter. There's a snap, the long count. Walter Rodriguez with room. He's heads up field. And there's nothing doing over there. Great uh, defense of that time by uh, offensively by New Bedford. New Bedford eats that up. It yeah. looks like it was Jesmond Brunskill with the tackle, along with number seven for the Whalers, which is Zakari Nunes. And most importantly, they kept Rodriguez from going out of bounds, so that means the clock keeps on running. So Cam remains out of the game. The junior receivers line up. Walter Rodriguez is the sole back. Four receivers, Jaden Campbell, 109. Ball around midfield, the 43. There's the snap, and it's bad. Jaden Campbell gets back, and he's going to lose. Oh, he's going to lose about six yards, maybe seven yards, in the boxes at 56 seconds. Are looking at another third and long. Brockton, again, having trouble with the conditions today. And New Bedford uh, says, you know what? Why don't we call a timeout? Brockton facing a third and like forever. So New Bedford uses the timeout. And um, the rain, uh, I might add, is coming down really, 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 really hard the here. The combination of the rain, the grass field, and Brockton's youth is really, you know, has not helped them these past few weeks as far as making mental mistakes and turning the ball over. Uh, let's give New Bedford credit, too. They're making the plays right now. They're keeping Brockton at bay. Brockton's uh, been able to... Uh, not energize any uh, offensive right uh, they, since that drive. They play five or six kids both ways, but they're all good football players right. in New Bedford. Really right. impressed with their physicality today. Yep. So the boxers, again, just like last year, was looking at a third and long after a first down. Let's see if the boxers try to get the ball to Cameron Montero in space here. You got to be careful here because uh, the grass is becoming very, very slippery, as you see there. Uh, Jaden tried to cut back, uh, escape danger, and he basically just went down. He just slipped down. The low snap could have been handled. It was a little, it was a tough one, but Jaden's, you know, he's handled tougher ones. Right. If you're Brockton, you gotta, gotta be very, very careful here. So the boxes come out. You're gonna see five, four wide receivers with Luke Turco, one of the backs in the slot. Brockton Walter does get. Rodriguez is the sole back. Brockton does get the ball to stop the second half. Jaden Campbell in the pistol. Single setback next to him. He has the snap. He's back. He takes a look. He throws the ball deep, and he gets a uh, ball. Yeah. Never had a chance. It slipped out of his hands. So and, uh, uh, unfortunately, Lopes, Lopes went slipping as well. So and, that had no shot yeah. right there. So the boxes will punt at 50 seconds of the second quarter. The conditions out there is getting uh, really, really bad right now. So ball protection is going to be key. So Cam Montero is not even back to punt right now. So who will be the punter? Uh, Cam's coming out there. So Cam is coming out there. So the boxes at fourth and 17. New Bedford will send Zakari Nunes and Jarrell Goodine. They're around their own 35-yard line in a 6-6 game. Let's see the snap from get Hank snap. Moss. It's terrific. And Cam bobbles it. He should kick that. And he does. He does a terrific job. Terrific job by Cameron. <laughs> Excellent job by uh, Montero that time. I think he wanted to run that, but he knew he had a game uh, right. 20 yards there. It wasn't a, a ton of space. And New Bedford will take over 38 seconds. And the same that we talked about for New Bedford, for Brockton that holds for New Bedford, ball protection is huge right here. All right, it's 38 seconds left. You don't want to do anything that uh, might cause uh, a turnover. So let's see what New Bedford has in store here. 
Maybe they, they run it once to get good yardage. We'll take it from so there. So the rain is really coming down heavy now. New Bedford in the pistol with Zakari Nunes as the sole back. 38 seconds left. A.J. Rivera. He'll get the ball. The ball's going to go to Zakari Nunes, and there's no Oof. room there. And that's picked up by Messiah DePina. Pina. tackle. Messiah it's a great Pina. tackle. So let's see if New Bedford just lets that run out. They're in no hurry. Coach DeBrito talking to A.J. Rivera. <laughs> Second and 10. The whale is at 18 seconds of the second quarter, and I don't think yeah, they're going to uh, run it. It looks play. like uh, DeBrito is signaling, uh, you know, let's just take this to, to the half. I, want, I don't want nothing, uh, no f crazy happening just before they're giving Brockton momentum. So, um, so we're going to head to halftime after a Jaden Campbell quarterback keeper for a two yard touchdown run. AJ Rivera matched it in the second quarter with his own five yard. Touchdown run. We're going to head to halftime at Paul Walsh Field. The Brockton Boxers and the New Bedford Whalers tied at six, Orlando. Right. Typical New Bedford-Brockton game. Both teams are playing hard. And um, this looked like it's going to come down to a four, the fourth quarter. And uh, maybe that next score is going to be a big one. So it looks like New Bedford's handled the elements a little bit better than Brockton since the first quarter. They've handled the grass, which they play on all year, and ball, sec ball security and hold on to the ball a little bit better. So we'll be back for some second-half action. Again, Leo Genitasio along with Orlando Galvo, 6-6.
Back at Walsh Field in New Bedford, Massachusetts, the Boxers and the Whalers are tied up at six. Leo Genitasio, along with the Brockton Ledgers, Orlando Galvo, the Postman, Mike Simmons on the production. You can catch us on, I haven't said it today, Brockton Community Access. You can catch us on the Brockton channels. So, Orlando, after brought New Bedford's first drive where they went backwards, the Boxers took over, got a big run from Luke Turco, took the ball inside the two-yard line and got a quarterback keeper from freshman Jaden Campbell. Right, and then they set the tone. And you said, okay, uh, this game's going to kind of go into Brockton's way. We, you know, we're going to do some scoring today, right? And then um, New Bedford showed up. The rain showed up, and um, it's continuing to rain out there. It is pouring. Um, so after trading the ball back a few times in the second quarter, New Bedford got a 60-yard run by Jarrell Goodine at the end of the first quarter, took the ball to the 15-yard line. A few runs later, A.J. Rivera kept it at nine minutes of the second quarter and tied the game up. Both teams missed the extra point, but I will say, I think since that, probably the second possession, it's been New Bedford's pretty much controlled this football game on both sides of the ball, Orlando. Right, let's, let's, let's call it how it is. They've made the correct adjustments. The Brito has, uh, you know, since that first drive, has, have kind of like, take away again, that Turco run, you, uh, they basically have stopped Brockton um, uh, to no, nothing, um, and so, They've handled the adversity of the right. weather in the field conditions a little bit better than the boxes. But, again, they play on grass right. Right. the entire year. The boxes don't. So, Brockton will go into the uh, coming out for the second half. Um, Coach Wiggins, Coach Weaver, the rest of the staff, I'm sure they're going to look over some stuff and try to make some adjustments here to come out with a victory. The same will be said for Coach uh, Mark DeBrito. The Whalers looking for their third victory this season. One game, maybe closer to making the MIAA Division I state playoffs. Any scores in the out-of-state scoreboard, Orlando, that well, we want to? Yes, we do. We have the, the big game, and um, this this score might uh, raise some eyes, eyebrows out there. Prep leads uh, CM 16 to nothing uh, with 4.55 left in the third quarter. How about that? Well, they've been the best football program in the state. The, I, don't, I know CM's right up there, but St. One. John's Prep has yeah. beaten CM twice in the Super Bowl. They right. beat a team that most thought were the best team in the state last year in Springfield Central. If I had to pick a program the past few years, I would say St. John's Prep, along with probably CM and Springfield are the, are the best programs in the state. Well, I mean, there were days, like like we said, that we played St. John's every year and routinely beat them. But, you know, that's what Coach Wiggins is trying to get us back to. Right. Well, let's call it how it is, too. Uh, the Catholics, they, they, they're they spoiled, right? And uh, they need a, a kid from New Hampshire, they get it. They need a kid from Rhode Island, they get it. It they, helps. You know, so um, St. Pierre, that being said, St. Pierre has done a great job there in um, – uh, uh, Denver is coaching uh, St. John's Prep. So talking to a few people close to Brockton, they're hoping that Coach Wiggins will have an impact on some of the kids who possibly leave Brockton and go to different schools and try to keep them in Brockton High School or maybe get a couple kids back. Not that that had anything to do because Peter Columbo would do the same exact thing. And Peter knew who his players were and Sometimes you can't force kids to stay in Brockton. If they're going to leave, they're going to leave. There's nothing a coach can do about it. But that, you know, Brockton still has great athletes. Everyone knows that. And you'd like to see those kids play for Brockton High and, you know, achieve success for their city and school. Right. I'm pretty sure Peter. Peter's watching. Uh, you know, he's out there supporting Brockton. You know, he's a Brockton through and through. He wants to see them do good regardless if he's coaching or somebody else Absolutely. is coaching. Absolutely. You know? Peter loves the kids along with yeah. Coach Bobby O'Neill, some of the other guys who, who are part of – Championship teams as players, championship teams as coaches, been around Division One athletes, professional players. They know what it takes to be successful in Brockton. Just not just because they're not part of the program anymore doesn't mean they don't root for the boxes. Mm -hmm. So again, we're about um, two minutes away from uh, playing time here at Paul Walsh Field. The boxes and the Whalers are tied at six. And Brockton will get the opening kickoff, Orlando. What do you think they need to do differently in the second half to come out of here with a victory? Well, how about protecting the ball? How about uh, limit your penalties? Uh, how about starting it exactly how you started the uh, uh, first uh, quarter, right? Uh, first drive uh, uh, to go up six to nothing. So I want to see more of that. And I want to see Cam Montero touch the ball a lot more. It seems like Cam is lining up away from the play. How about having Cam take uh, a couple snaps? I want to see things like that. So in a game like this, you have a freshman quarterback. You would think that the senior, Montero, who's obviously one of the best players in the state, I mean, he's heading to a major college football next year. You'd like to see him maybe carry the ball in this weather and maybe take a little bit of the pressure off Jaden Campbell. Right, right. Uh, 
I agree. I mean, he's 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 done a good job, uh, you know, handling the ball on some occasions. Uh, that could have been fumbles, but we've seen a couple of mishaps out there. Not his fault. Bad snaps. So um, maybe. this is. Orlando, this is going to be a battle between both young offensive lines right here. Who's going to be the, who's going to be tougher? Who's going to get down low and get dirty and move the other guy around? If Brockton is able to control the line of scrimmage and push New Bedford around, I see they, they have a chance of winning this football game. But things need to change since the second quarter, where New Bedford really has controlled the line of scrimmage. Uh, you take the last 20, uh, 20 minutes of this game. It's uh, New Bedford that's. Uh, playing, you say down and dirty. They're the ones that are getting down and dirty. They're the ones that seem like they want this game um, more than Brockton at this time. But hopefully, you know, we, we still have 24 minutes to play. Hopefully that changes and Brockton does get the ball first so they can make a statement right here in uh, this first series of the second half. So the boxers will be in action next Saturday at home. It's the um, Cape Cod Cafe game. I believe WEI will be down. Um, the whole staff to help support Coach Wiggins. Uh, the boxes will be playing, again, the Hilltoppers. They'll play Bridgewater, Raynham on Thanksgiving Day, and we don't know yet who the other two opponents will be. So for the Whalers here, kicking will be number three, Anthony Diakite, terrific football player. He's had a terrific day. Back deep for the boxes, you'll see the sophomore Casey Rhodes, and that's Cameron Montero. The up guys will be Walter Rodriguez and Ahmad Wiggins, and here is the kick. It's pretty good kick right down the middle, and it gets through the legs of the sophomore Rhodes. Cameron Montero has some space. He gets to the inside, outside, and, you know, makes a smart play and goes right down. But the miss pickup of the ball right there is going to help New Bedford really uh, keep the boxes without good field position. The boxes will take over first and 10 at their, about their 17-yard line. Jaden Campbell comes in. Looked like a mod should have caught, caught that. Um, well, you know what? Maybe the maybe go. you know the ball was over his head, and he has the back guys. He really want those guys controlling the football, and it's just the field conditions, the sophomore roads. That was just a tough play for him. So, let's see. What we have here. We're going to remain in the eye with Walter Rodriguez and Christian Flaherty. Brockton with three receivers, two to the right. Campbell gets the snap. The ball is barely held on. And Rodriguez is they're not going right. anywhere. So they're barely getting that snap off of Lando. Right. Campbell looked like he was from just the, from barely the, held the ball. From the start, that, that didn't look good. That didn't look good. Yeah. So New Bedford's got everyone, just like Lawrence did in that game, they have everyone inside the box. Right, and just that, too many guys to block. You see Brockton's going in the center now. That it's been uh, bad snaps. I think that's led to uh, them trying to go under center. New Bedford will remain in that 43 with those three terrific linebackers. The safeties will be near the box. The two uh, cornerbacks will be lined up one-on-one. -on -one. Still in the eye. Christian Flaherty is the fullback. Campbell gets the snap. The ball's going to go to Walter Rodriguez. He has a little bit of room. That's a pretty good run. He gains about, about four, and that would be about third down and eight at the bar, or third down and seven at the box of 20. Yeah, that time uh, Diakate uh, closed that up real quick. Anthony Diakate with a little help from, um, I think that's, Desmond Brunskill, we've said his name a bunch of times today, really active at the safety position. So about third down and seven at the, about the 21-yard line. The boxes remain in the same formation. Cameron Montero is in the slot. Ramel Johnson and that looks like, yep, Jaden Wooten. Christian Flaherty is in an offset eye. Walter Rodriguez is, a, is far back. And there's a snap, and the ball's going to go to Rodriguez. He has a little bit of room, and that's closed up pretty well. But he keeps his legs moving. Really good run by Walter. Wow. And he gains three extra yards just from moving his legs. Wow. So it looks about to be about a fourth down and two at the 28. And I don't think Brockton can go for this. Can they, Orlando? you got to kick the ball. Well, Wiggins is uh, giving Campbell the play, so it looks like Brockton's going to go. So Brockton Faith at a fourth and one. Well, we got a face masking call. Wow, what a big break for the boxes right there. So a five-yard face mask against the Whalers gives the boxes the first down at the their own 31-yard line as the penalties are mounting up on both teams. Well, a huge penalty for New Bedford that made uh, Wiggins' decision uh, even easier. Brockton remains in the eye. We got Luke Turco in the offset with Christian Flaherty. Twin wide receivers to the left and right. Cameron Montero in the slot. Jaden Campbell under center. 
And Luke Turco gets the ball, and he runs hard up the middle. And he's got space, and he gets to the middle. He's at the 40, the 30, goal, the 20, and there's a hold. 30 uh, yards back in the play, you're going to get a hold. And you're going to get another 15 yarder for a horse tackle as well on New Bedford. So unfortunately for the boxers, uh, the play's going to be called back. That flag, <laughs> the flag came out, but it looks like a hold against the boxes. And the well, this is going to be offset. And um, well, one one's a dead ball. Mm -hmm. Luke Turco with a great run. It looked like he was inside the New Bedford twenty, but the call we don't have who that is on. But it looked like it was on one of the receivers. The second time receiver's been called for a hold. Right, thirty down, thirty yards down the field, and um, I would like to see that play again, that, that holding call again. Well, either way, we're not going to change the call. So Brockton will take over first down. So we're getting a holding call. Wow, what a what a break for the Whalers. So Luke Turco's 60-yard run will be offset. They're going to offset. Those penalties will offset. The horse caller in the hold will offset. So Brockton will take over at the original line of scrimmage. Well, and, and, and that call was on Cameron Montero. Well, I'm going to be honest. With the play being offset, it, it better, it's, it's good that we didn't even uh, get that horse call it, uh, tackle because then they would have went 10 yards from the spot, and it, we probably would have ended up having um, more yardage. Now they're going to go back to the original line of scrimmage, Leo. So Luke Serco comes into the game and immediately provo provides a spark, great vision. He saw to the left right there, and he gained – what would have been about a 60-yard run down to the Bedford 20, and so we're going to start it all over again at the Brockton 32. Another penalty that really, you know, Brockton didn't make, you know, they had no impact on the play. Turco was 30 yards away from where that flag was called. So the boxes will take over once again at the 31-yard line, and Walter Rodriguez is back in it running back. Christian Flaherty, the offset eye. Cameron Montero in the slot. He has the point, and Walter gets it. And he has a little bit of room, and he'll gain about two yards. Very little yardage there. So, good game tackling by the New Bedford Whalers linebackers again. Led by Zachary Nunes and Anthony Diacate. And Jose Ayala. We've said his name a bunch of times today. So, second and eight for the boxes. At their own about 34-yard line, Walter Rodriguez remains the sole running back. Offset eye with Christian Flaherty. Two receivers to the left. The ball goes to Walter again, and that's not going anywhere. So he tried to bounce that to the outside. He might have gained a yard or two, and we'll say a yard. And that will be third down in about six at the their own 36-yard line. Yeah, Yella again shooting the gaps. Uh, uh, he's having a huge game for the he's New Bedford. He's a senior. The senior linebackers are really good in New Bedford. So we're looking at about a third down and six on their own 37. Luke Turco's in the game now in the offset eye with Christian Flaherty. And there's the snap, and the ball's going to go to Luke. And he has a little room to the outside, and he gets to the outside. And he's going to be real yeah. close to a first down. Good vision by Turco. He bounced that to the outside, and they're going to get a first down. Right. So once again, Luke Turco, at the end, he almost lost that ball, but good vision, seeing not an opening, bounces to the outside, and the boxes will take over a first down at their own about 43-yard line. Seven and a half left at Paul Walsh Field in a 6-6 game. Luke Turco remains the running back. Christian Flaherty in the offset eye. Jaden Wooten, and that looks like Jaden Lopes Rivero. The ball goes to Turco again. He gains right. about a yard. Nice tackle again. And is that Jose Ayala? In fact, it is. Once again, and that is Jose Ayala. And Diacate. Anthony Diacate. So, no gain right there. Maybe a loss of a half a yard. So, Brockton will be looking at about a second down and 10 at their about. They're on 44-yard line. Jaden Campbell talks to Coach Wiggins. We're under at, seven in the third quarter. You look at Ayala. He, he's made for conditions like this. He, he is everywhere. So the boxes line up in the offs. Well, they're in the eye this time with Christian Flaherty, Luke Turco. Two receivers with Christian, well, Cam Montero on the slot. He gets the ball. The ball goes to Turco, mm. and there's nothing there. Mm. 
terrific job by Anthony Diacate. As the New Bedford defensive line has done a terrific job these last couple plays, really taking away any space that Luke would have. So third down and 10, Jaden Campbell goes over to Coach Wiggins. Brockton switches up a drive football. At a minimum, Orlando, you should be able to maybe box New Bedford in on a punt if they don't make this play right here. So Jaden Campbell heads into the huddle. New Bedford remains in that 43 with most of the guys in the box. Man coverage on both sides. Desmond Brunskill is the safety. He's about 10 yards back of his linebackers. Third and 10, Jaden Campbell under center. In the eye, the ball goes, he fakes it. He's gonna throw the ball uh, and Camp he fell slipped. down. Camp slipped. Camp slipped down and almost an interception. Yep. Yep. So Cameron Montero slips, the ball was, the play was there to be made. And Jaden Campbell throws the ball incomplete. In fact, the play was there. Cam doesn't slip. He has that ball, and he has a lot of yards. But uh, Mother Nature is having a big part in, in, in calling this game. So Cameron Montero will be back to punt. New Bedford has Darrell Goodine and Zakari Noons back. Let's see ever, the ever-important snap here. Ahmad Wiggins, the protector. Casey Rhodes and Ramel Johnson will go down. The snap is good. Cam with the ball. Almost a block. It's a decent punt. Let's see how the, the bounce is terrific. Nice. And Casey Rhodes will field the ball. And the Bedford will take over first down at about their own 25-yard line. So uh, Brockton um, uses almost seven minutes of the clock to start the, uh, the second half and doesn't even uh, cross over midfield. Uh, uh -oh. Well, they did. They had a 60-yard yeah. run that was called back by a wide Not receiver hold. Though. Yeah, unofficially, that was really nowhere near the play. Those, those mistakes have been killing Brockton all season. So at 524, Leo Genitasio, along with the legend Orlando Galvo, the postman Mike Simmons, Brockton Community Access. You can catch us on the Brockton channels. New Bedford with A.J. Rivera in the shotgun. Jarrell Goodine is the, is the sole running back. In the pistol, the ball's going to go to Goodine. He has a little bit of room, and he gets through there. Maybe he gains a yard or two. Keeps his legs moving. And he does look like his father running the ball. Right. Probably a gain of two. And again, Mr. Cash Money <laughs> plugging that hole, making that stop. Along with Amog Wiggins, that will be Cash Petway, the six foot seven sophomore. So AJ Rivera talks to Coach DeBrito. Four under five minutes left in the third quarter. The boxes and the whalers are tied at six. So A.J. Rivera in the pistol. Darrell Goodine is the sole back next to him. We have an H back on, slick to the right, Zakari Noons. The ball goes. Good, the ball's left. Yeah. So the first real miscue from the whale is with the ball. A.J. Rivera and Darrell Goodine. And a very alert, alert play by A.J. Rivera saves Brockton from taking over inside the 22-yard line. Very alert, was able to pounce on the ball. Brockton almost got that break. Rivera was able to save a disaster right there. So the box is uh, now defensively looking to get a stop here and get the ball back. New Bedford with a third and 11. Let's see if they put the ball in the air. They've been not afraid to throw the ball today. A.J. Rivera has shown a pretty good arm. He's throwing an interception and a terrific play. By We're under four minutes at 3.58 of the third quarter. New Bedford, Brockton, six. We've got three receivers, two to the left, two backs in the backfield. Let's see if we see maybe a screen pass here. The two backs next to A.J. Rivera. There's a snap. The ball's going to be given. It's a fake handoff, and it's a terrific play uh, defensively. Baker. That's Ty Baker along with Messiah Pina and Ahmad Wiggins. And Ty Baker has made his presence felt today defensively. Another underclassman getting some uh, playing time today and making every uh, bit of, of it work. So right no yardage there for the Whalers, and they'll send back Desmond Brunskill to punt. Luke Turkle will go back around probably his own 50-yard line as the Whalers and Boxes are closing in at the end of the third quarter. So New Bedford there, take, uh, DeBrito taking no chances to just run the ball. And, um, you know, third and, third and 12 uh, in these conditions probably feel like third and 50. Do you know one thing we've never had in the series, Lando? A tie. Right. So we're at 6-6. Six, six. Fourth down and 11 for the Whalers. Desmond Brunskill back. He has the punt. And it goes off the side of his foot. Brockton should take over a decent field position. The ball bounces sideways. So the boxes will take over at the New Bedford 41. We're at a 247 in the third quarter. Leo Genitasio, along with the legend, Orlando Galvo, the postman, Mike Simmons on the production. 
you can catch us on uh, Brockton Community Access on the Brockton channels. Well, this is around the 40-yard line. This is when you got to, I think you got to start using Cam right now. Uh, this is a perfect position for you to uh, take the lead here. Brockton's got to, got to capitalize here. So the 10 at the New Bedford 41. New Bedford has been terrific defensively most of this game. They're going to go back to the shotgun. The rain is kind of holding up a bit. Walter Rodriguez is the sole back. Mm -hmm. Luke Turco in the slot. Four wide, two to the left and two to the right. Let's see if the boxers throw the ball. Motion, the ball's going to go to Turco. He has a little bit of room. He sees the hole well. And it's closed off, and he keeps those oh, legs moving. This. And that is an absolutely terrific run by Luke. Wow, yeah, 10 yards. Should have been stopped for uh, about a two-yard game, but he was able to get eight yards more, more on that play. And um, great run by Turco. And that tackle was by... Looked like there was Desmond Brunskill again from the safety position. Mm -hmm. And one thing we said all season about Luke, he keeps those legs moving. He runs hard. So the box is with about a, about a yard to go. As number nine, Jose Ayala uh, walks off the field, who's been really good for, yeah, you, you don't today see defensively them, for the Whalers. Right, you don't want to see them losing him, but I think he got something in his eye. He'll be back. Yeah. So second and one at the 32-yard line. Brockton remains in the shotgun. Luke Turco is in the slot along with Cameron Montero. Walter Rodriguez is the sole back with Jaden Campbell. The snap, Cameron goes in the slot. Cameron gets the ball. Cameron slides, he oh, falls down. So, you know, one thing with the difference between we saw Luke and Cam there, you're not going to be able to cut here. Luke, Luke got that ball mm -hmm. and just kept those legs moving forward. Cam tried to cut there, falls down, loses four yards. Well, you want to see the ball in Cam's hand. He, he got it there, and um, unfortunately, he slipped. So, so the boxers down. lose four, and it will be fourth down and five at the New Bedford 35. Mm. Jaden Campbell gets the call from Coach Wiggins. Tough to run sideways with these field conditions. Right. So the Brockton remain in the pistol with the H-back Christian Flaherty with Walter Rodriguez as a sole back. Cam's in the slot. Two receivers. The snap. Cam in motion. Cam fakes. Walter Rodriguez gets the ball, and he'll gain oh, about three yards. That ball came out, looks like. That ball. That would like be another came. fumble. Let's see if they get the ball, because Walter Dutton, nope, they're calling him down. So they gained about three yards. They'll be third, fourth and about two at the about the 34-yard line. Walter's had a couple times today where that ball is, hands may be wet. This is, no doubt about it, the biggest play of this game so far. Jaden Campbell has been successful this season in quarterback keepers in short yard situations. Maybe they uh, do not want to turn around and hand off and slip and try to gain those two and a half yards on a quarterback keeper. New Bedford defensive line has been terrific today. Their linebackers, very active. So the boxes make a change with the football. They're going to come right out to the line of scrimmage in 15 seconds of the third quarter in a 6-6 football game. Yeah, so here we go. Big play here, guys. We don't see Luke Turco in the game. Well, he is... No, it's Walter Rodriguez back there. Mm -hmm. Christian Flaherty Southland. will be offset as an H-back. Fourth down and two. Here's the ball. The ball's going to – he keeps it. He has – oh, yeah, they're going to throw the ball. And they're going to successful. And Cameron keeps the ball. And Cameron gets upfield. And goes. Cameron's going to go down the sideline. And Brockton's going to score. Cam Montero off a of play action. Wide open on the flats, was able to dodge a tackle, take it all the way, and what do we say? Get the ball in your best player's hands, and that's what happened. So we got to tip our caps to Coach Wiggins with a terrific play call. Right. He saw New Bedford crowd right. that line of scrimmage. The fake to Walter Rodriguez. He rolls Jaden Campbell out to the right, mm -hmm. and Cam Montero does what he does. He's a right. terrific athlete. He makes someone miss. He goes down the sidelines, and the boxers take a 12-6 lead with three seconds left of the third quarter. A big, big, big... Uh Play call, great well, call, call by uh, Wiggins that time. They're not going to attempt the extra point. They're going to go for two here. That'd be smart. So this would be huge. So the boxes will go for the two-point conversion at the new three, New Bedford three-yard line. They're up by six. Let's see how they line up here. Jaden Campbell will be with Walter Rodriguez. We see Jaden Wooten, Jamel, Ramel Johnson, Cameron Montero, and Jaden Los Ribeiro. There's the spread, and the ball's going to go. He rolls him out. He looks. He looks over. 
Oh, and he had him wide open. He, he just underthrew him. him. He was wide open. He threw it behind him. And again, uh, Johnson slipped, um, or else that was a, a good two point conversion. And Jaden Campbell did a terrific job. Right. He shedded a blitzer there, stayed on his feet, and the ball just, you know, slipped out of his hands and was behind him. So the game will remain at 12 to 6 for the boxes at three seconds of the third quarter. Well, well, well I, didn't, I didn't see uh, Lou Turk on the backfield. I was. I was just going to say watch for that play action to Cam, and um, I kind of knew that was coming. Uh, it was able to work, hit Cam. Cam was able, under these conditions, gather that ball, dodge a tackle, and take it all the way for the touchdown. So, once again, Brockton with a 32-yard touchdown pass. Jaden Campbell to Cameron Montero that gives them the lead 12-6. We're nearing the end of the third quarter between the Boxers and the Whalers. New Bedford will send back. The same two guys we've seen all day. That will be Jarrell Goodine and Takari Nunes. Right. So the kicker is that. Looks like it is number 67. Yeah, I thought it was Danny DaCosta, but on the roster it says Andrew DeSantos. He's right. kicked well today. The footing is treacherous out there right now. And... uh. We know sometimes, even in these conditions, uh, when you're constantly running, 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 running the ball, what can that do, Leo? That can open up the passing sometimes, and that that, that was able to happen. Uh, it was a great play called yep. by Coach Wiggins. Yep. So, the DeSantos back for the kick with Goodine and Noons, and he has the kick. And he gets a little piece of it. The ball's going to bounce up at about the 20. Yeah, picked up by Zakari Nunes. He has room to the outside. He gets upfield. He looks to cut. And it's a really good return by Zakari. He's going to get the ball to the 30-yard line, where at the end of the third quarter, New Bedford will take over at their own 31. So here at Paul Walsh Field, near the campus of New Bedford High School, the Brockton Box is 12, New Bedford Whale is 6. So back here at New Bedford High School, Paul Walsh Field, Brockton Community Access. You can catch us on the Brockton channels. Leo Genitasio, along with the Brockton legend, Orlando Galvo, the postman, Mike Simmons, on the production. The Whalers in the boxes once again in a one-score football game, Orlando. Brockton leading 12-6. The three seconds left on a fourth and two. A terrific play, Paul, gets them to a 12-6 lead. So New Bedford will take over after the kickoff at their own, looks like their own 30-yard line. A.J. Rivera in the shotgun. Looks like Gerald Goodine is the sole back in the pistol. Here is the snap. He looks, he's going to roll, he keeps it. And that looks like a forward pass, and he's going to gain probably about nine yards right there. Nice play call by Coach DeBrito. So that's going to gain about nine, maybe a first down. They'll gain him 10. So good play call, good adjustment by Coach Mark DeBrito. They'll gain 10 yards on the run by Gerald Goodine. And good job by Rivera, um, reading. Uh, He's the been good today. Yep, and, He's uh, been good. Able to get the ball His to first start, Orlando, right? Uh -huh. So the Brockton looking to make a stop here and get the ball back. They're up by six. A.J. Rivera remains in the pistol with the sole back as Darrell Goodine. He's got three to the right, one to the left, first and ten. There's the snap. The ball's going to go to Goodine. Rivera keeps it. The Brockton defensive end slips. And then Luke, there's a missed tackle. Rivera stays on his feet. Oh, oh and he just got drilled. Nice tackle by number 45 of the boxes. That Depina. is Jordan DePina, but it's going to be a gain of seven by the nice run by A.J. Rivera. Well, New Bedford sense an urgency right now. They know they don't have many possessions left. Uh, this is the fourth quarter, so. So two big plays by the Whalers, down by six, a first down and seven yards. They're going to take over at about the 48-yard line here. Second down and about two. Darrell Goodarm remains the sole back. In the pistol, A.J. Rivera, there's a snap. The ball's going to go to Goodine. There's a little bit of space, and it's clogged up. It's, it's very close to a first down. Good tackle again by number 52 from the boxes. That is Baker again. Ty Who Baker. said his name a few times today. Ty Baker, very active. 
So he holds him to about a yard. And the boxes will send off their defensive end, Nathan Jean Philippe, the sophomore. So let's see if the boxes defensively, they put everyone in the box here. Third down and a short one. 10 minutes, 40 seconds left of the fourth quarter. They're up by six. A.J. Rivera in the pistol. One back is Darrell Goodnight. Three to the right, one to the left. Oh, and he moved. So yep. that's going to help Brockton. We're going to gain five yards right there. Desmond Brunskill left a little bit early. So that could be a key penalty for the Whalers. All right, third down and short. Now becomes third down and six. So at around the 44-yard line, the Whalers lose five yards. Cash will leave the game. Cash Petway, and we'll see the sophomore. Back in at defensive end, Nathan Jean Philippe. So the Whalers third and six is obviously two down territory, probably for them, Orlando. AJ Rivera gets the call. He's been terrific handling the football day for the Whalers. Showing a lot of marks here, quarterback. Right. So the senior signal caller with Jarrell Goodine next to him, three to the right. In the pistol. And there's the snap. He's back. He's going to throw. He got something open in the middle, and he got him. Great play, great play call. Just a little bit too much space Brockton right. gave up right there. Well, New Bedford found the hole in the defense, and uh, Rivera was able to put, uh, stick the pass right in between the, the two Brockton uh, well, defenders, Bro and uh, great Brockton's play. Brockton's sitting in that zone at right. 10 yards off right. the ball. He just ran to the stakes, turned right. around, and it was an easy pitch and catch. So a huge conversion for the Whalers. Gets the ball into Brockton 45. We're at nine minutes left. They have the ball in boxer territory. Yeah, you talk about clutch. That was clutch right there. Good pass by uh, Rivera. So the boxes looking to get a stop here. The Whalers looking for the potential go-ahead score. We're at under 10 minutes in the fourth quarter. A.J. Rivera remains in the pistol. The sole back is Darrell Goodine. He's got twins to the left and right. The boxes remain in that 43 defense. The safeties are back. The snap, there goes motion. They're gonna get a timeout from timeout from the Whalers, Mark DeBrito. He saw something he didn't like. We saw a motion there by Jaron Goodine with Zakari Nunes in the backfield. So Whalers will use one of their timeouts. You know, what is Coach Weaver saying to his defense right now, Orlando? Right, we need a stop. We need a a, a minus uh stop in the backfield right now. They that that could help. Uh New Bedford seemed to be uh doing the right things, uh, calling the right plays right now in this uh, drive. I've been impressed with Coach Goodine as far as his creativity in offense. Yeah, DeBrito, he's, he's doing a he's uh, very He's got a backup job, quarterback, yeah. and he's done a nice job putting him into successful spots. Right. So we're down at about nine minutes of Brockton Community Access. You can catch us on the Brockton channels, the Boxers and the Whalers, and a 12-6 Brockton lead right now, New Bedford. We're about the 45-yard line, first and 10. They're looking for the go-ahead score. Coach DeBrito... You got a lot of guys going both ways. The weather's certainly been a factor. Could fatigue be playing a role right now, Orlando? Well, uh, it could be. I mean, a lot of a lot of a lot of energy out there here in the rain. Uh, the field is uh, the ball is very heavy, so um, a so lot, of, lot of runs here. So th this should be a good football game. The next few years, both teams pretty young. I, I expect both these teams to be much better the following two years. So the Whalers take over here. We got first and 10. A.J. Rivera in the pistol. His sole back looks like it is Zakari Nunes. And Jar Jarrell DePina goes in motion. Jarrell Goodine. The ball goes. He fakes it. He got him down the slot. He looks over. That ball could be. Oh, oh. just underthrown. That was a good play call. Unfortunately, unfortunately from Brockton, that was underthrown because he, he, had, open. he had the guy wide open. Uh, he Good on was wide open. He caught um, he caught Jared Mighty mm -hmm. going the opposite directions, and Goodine just slipped. So they take their shot there. They have three more downs to try to keep moving the ball. The whale is at second and ten. AJ Rivera gets the call, and he is huddling up this time. The boxes remain in the same front. Looks like the 43 defense <clears throat> with the corners in man. The safeties are back. So there's some space there for the whales in the pistol. And there's the ball. The ball's going to go. He's got room to the outside. That could have been a hole there, yeah. and they're not going to call it. Right. So that is a huge game. That's where they've had success today, on the left side. Right. Uh, like you said, uh, Leo, looked like a hole there. No call. Uh, Goodine was able to take advantage of it. Uh, first down, New Bedford. So huge. That, that was Zakari Nunes on the carry. First down for the Whalers at the 32. When teams have had success the past couple weeks, Orlando, they've ran to that side, and 
Brockton has uh, got to make an adjustment there. So we're at first down at the Brockton 32 for the Whalers, trying to match the box's score. <clears throat> first and 10 for the Whalers. They are going to go in the pistol again. Jaron Goodine is the sole back. Trips to the right, one to the left. In the pistol, here is the snap. And that might have been a five yards on the boxes. Yep. And we're going to get five easy yards for the Whalers. So it'll be first down and five, and another mental mistake from the boxes. That might have been uh, Pina, I believe. Messiah Pina. Yep. So the boxes give up five yards, and Bedford will have the ball around the 26 yard line, and we're going to go on to eight minutes soon after the snap. AJ Rivera huddles up. He is going to be in the pistol with Jaron Goodine as the sole back. Trips to the right. First down and five. There's the snap. He looks. The ball goes to Goodine. He has some space, and it's clogged up pretty well by Ahmad Wiggins and the rest of the box's defenders. Messiah Pina, Luke Turco, and I think that was Ahmad Wiggins. It was. So second and five with no gain. Let's see what the Whalers go to here. They've been creative offensively. They've ran some speed sweep. They've ran some misdirection. They've thrown the ball. Ahmad Wiggins read that like a book. He was in there on the tackle. Great play. So second and five. The formation remains the same. Zagari Nunes is the running back. Second down and five. A.J. Rivera in the pistol. There's a snap. He, it's going to be held by Rivera. He gets to the outside, and there's another missed tackle by the boxes. And he is going to gain the first down. So that ball fake has really done something on the left side to Brockton where they've gained a ton of yards today. Another good read by Rivera. Um, was able to keep the ball, some yardage, and um, Bedford, this is a great drive right now they got going. Matching Brockton's uh, TD drive. The Whalers now first down at the Brockton 21. Having a lot of his success over the Brockton left side there. AJ Rivera with a great ball fake. So first down, we're at about seven minutes of the fourth quarter. First and 10, AJ Rivera with Sakari Noons. And that looked like a legal procedure, not gonna get it. So he won't gain much there. Looked like he left early, but no. There will be a one yard gain for Sakari Noons. It would look like we saw a little movement there. Again, no call, but Brockton was able to stuff it out anyway. So the boxes, that was clogged up real fast by Jalen Jackson and uh, number 50, Ruben Bernard, the senior. So second down and nine at the 20 yard line at under seven minutes of the fourth quarter. A.J. Rivera, he has Jerron Goodine in the backfield with him. Oh, it's A.J. Rivera, yep, with Zakari Noons, I apologize. Single ball, the ball's gonna run, it's gonna be in motion. He gets him, he have a chance to get him the outside. And they yeah. try to run to the outside, and that's eaten up by Ahmad Wiggins. Great play by Ahmad Wiggins. Obviously, the snap was not good uh, to the good eye, and he had to reach back for it. But Wiggins was able to stuff it out and make the tackle. Huge loss. They haven't gained anything on that side today. So third down at about 13 for the Whalers. We're under six minutes. Let's see what Coach DeBrito has in store right here. A.J. Rivera gets the call. He goes into his huddle. The boxes don't make any changes. The defense remains the same. Coach Weaver... Moving a few guys over. The right side, the left side for um, the Whalers has been successful. Almost got to watch out for the screen Trips here. Trips left here. There's the snap. Zakari Noons, he's back. He's going to roll to the left. He has time. He's looking. He throws the ball deep. The ball is incomplete. Overthrown, but uh, Brockton had two guys there. Great defensive. He uh, had nowhere to throw the ball that time. So let's see what the Whalers do here in fourth down and 14. Brockton's got to be disciplined here. No penalties. We're at 5.20 of the fourth quarter. The Whalers in the box, the Whalers six. The Brocks is with the go-ahead score. They have 12 right now, so a 12-6. Boxer lead late in the fourth quarter. Desperately looking for their second victory. Let's see what the Whalers have in store right now. Coach Rivera, talk, uh, Aiden, AJ Rivera talking to Coach DeBrito. Tough to throw the ball in this weather, but both teams have had key conversions throwing the ball this quarter. I believe he's gonna call a timeout here, Leo. Okay, so you got to gain 14 yards if you're in Bedford. You got to get the ball to the stakes. You could throw a screen pass, but with the footing of Lando, it's going to be difficult to run the ball that yard. So I think they're going to have to throw the ball to the sticks. If you're Brockton, what is Weaver talk, Coach Weaver talking to his guys about? Well, you have a fourth 
and um, very, very long. It's uh, you got to stay disciplined here. Um, this is this could be huge right here, right? Um, but this down is in your favor. Fourth and a long. This is what you want. Fourth and a very, very long situation. Uh, you you want to stay disciplined here in this situation. Brockton's has buckled down when it's had to today. Just that one scoring drive from the Whalers. 520, Leo Genitasio along with the legend. They know him all over the city. Brockton's Orlando Galvo, the postman Mike Simmons on the production. No one's been coming down to Paul Walsh Field more than you, Orlando, the past 35 years. It always seems to be good football games down here. Very different, though, sitting here in the booth. Usually I'm on the you well, know, you, well, Usually, stands, usually uh, you have a few more, uh, few more uh, words for the referees, but you've been right. good today. Well, the referees, uh, to their defense, have been very good as well. They've today. been, they've been yeah. fair both sides. Yeah. No complaints whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So fourth down in about eh, 13. A.J. Rivera is going to remain in the shotgun. The box is in a, looks like a zone defense. Zagari Noons the soul back. There is the snap. Oh, the ball's a bad snap. He gets to the outside. And he's got, oh, he stays on his feet. He cuts back. He's not going to be able to gain much there. And a terrific job by the Brockton defense. The poor snap really hurt A.J. Rivera, but Brockton showed a lot of discipline right there, and they'll take over at five minutes left with a 12-6 All right, lead. Brockton, uh, New Bedford gets the ball at the 21-yard line. Uh, first down to go. Brockton keeps him out of the red zone. A couple of big stops. Obviously a bad snap there, but... Uh, Huge, huge stop here with a 5-11 left to play in this game. Well, now Brockton has to protect the football. So ball security is at the utmost right now. The boxes take over 5-11 in the fourth quarter. Let's see if we see Luke Turco in the backfield. He's been terrific today. Walter Rodriguez has also had some really tough yards. So Brockton will remain in the eye. Christian Flaherty, the junior, with Luke Turco back there. Brockton tightened up the splits. Cameron Montero on the slot. First down and 10. The ball goes to Turco. He has a little room. He keeps the legs moving. And he gains about two yards. The clock will keep moving. So we're at about under five minutes. We got a final uh, from uh, Danvers. Uh, prep 19, CM 8. Who does CM got next week? When's the last time Coach Dibbs lost two in a row? Mm. So congratulations to the St. John Prep Eagles on their victory over CM today. But back where it's important, Brockton. In New Bedford, 12 sick boxes. We're under five. Second down, probably about six. Brockton at about the, their own 28 and a half yard line. They're going to remain in the eye. Christian Flaherty and Luke Turco. Cameron Montero in the slot. Ramel Johnson and Jaden Losevera are the wide, wide receivers. 426, 425. The clock is moving. Jaden Campbell under center. There's the snap. The ball's going to go to Luke. He has not much room there, but he keeps the legs moving oh, look at this and run. moving and moving. And he keeps those. He's going to gain four yards. So we're going to be at about third down and two as Luke Turco does what he's done all season. He keeps those legs moving. Right. Should have been stopped. Again, he got three more yards. And then Brockton, have a favorable third down and uh, about uh, three. So nice tackle by number 52, Tail Guzman. And I might say the wind is, is, has picked up in the last uh, five minutes or so. So 3.45 left, fourth quarter. Brockton with a third down and three at their own, about 34-yard line, 33 and a half. They're going to remain in the eye. Same Cameron Montero in the slot. There is basically no one in the middle of the field. Does Brockton take a chance to throw the ball, Lando? So here's the ball. Jaden's going to keep it. He's going to move his legs. I don't think. Oh, he oh, keeps moving his this. legs. And a terrific quarterback sneak by the boxes will move the flex. The offensive line move says, six. Campbell, right on our backs. We're going to finish this game right now. Good, so, good effort. So Brockton really putting it on their young offensive line. Four plays, they gain 12 yards. And with 3-12 left, the boxes have a first down at their own 40 with a six-point lead. Huge first down by the Brockton boxes that time. So, Jaden Campbell, they're going to huddle up. There's no sense of rushing. Let's see who the running back is. It remains Luke Turco, Christian Flaherty, the fullback. They're going to stay in the eye. Cameron Montero in the slot. New Bedford with everyone near the line of scrimmage. Campbell. He gets the snap. The ball goes to Luke. He moves his feet. He keeps moving. He keeps moving. Ah. And he gains about a yard. So at 2.36, let's see if New Bedford starts using timeouts. Yeah, Luke, both hands in the ball. Nowhere to go that time. Was nope. able to get uh, about a yard. Yep. 
So the clock continues to move. I don't, three timeouts. So New Bedford used at least one of them. So they're probably going to wait till second or third down now to do it. Brockton in no rush. We're at 12-6 at two minutes left about in the fourth quarter. Paul Walsh Field, Leo Genitasio, the legend Orlando Galvo, the postman Mike Simmons on the production. The boxers come out, they're in the eye. Christian Flaherty, the junior. Walter Rodriguez is the running back now. Let's see what they do. Jaden Campbell under center. He gets the snap, the ball goes to Walter. He looks, he tries to go outside. He gets nothing there, nothing doing, but he swung forward for a game of about two yards. So in a minute of 47, New Bedford will use one of their final two timeouts. Yeah, again, Ayala, Ayala flying through the, the line of scrimmage like a rocket and able to make that stop. And uh, we've said their names all day today. The three New Bedford linebackers right. have been terrific all day. Yeah, Ayala's uh, primarily very, very impressed with that kid today. Anthony Diacate, yep. uh, Jose Ayala, been terrific. Yep. So third down and uh, probably say a long eight. The box is at 147 with a six point lead. Nothing fancy right here, Orlando. I'm sure we'll see another quarterback sneak, mm -hmm. maybe a uh, Luke Turco run, and they'll punt the ball. And, you know, if New Bedford goes down in 60 yards in this rain and beat you, you got to tip your cap to them. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but, you know. Uh, first down here, you know, how about a good run, get a first down and uh, be a take a knee. Right? Be, a, be a good win for the right. Be yep. a good win for Coach Wiggins, the mm -hmm. staff, the kids. They've worked really hard yep. this past month to put themselves in position to win football games. It hasn't gone their way. This would really be a, a nice win. Right. This new Bedford team is young, but they play good football yeah, most of the season. Tough. Yep. So let's see what the boxes do here. Luke Turco is the back. It will be an offset eye with Christian Flaherty. The box is... Under center. The ball's going to be a quarterback sneak again. Yeah. The push, the push, the push, the Look push. At this. He keeps his legs Look moving. At this. And he's going to get a first oh. down, but the penalty flag again. Well, I don't know what the call is, but they would have had the first it's down. It's going to be a holding on Brockton. <laughs> so the holding call will move Brockton back 12 yards, or uh, 10 yeah. yards. So Jaden Campbell once again moved the legs. Let's see. Well, the Brockton guys are pointing. Assisting. I've never seen that call. <laughs> they, have, they haven't made that call since the 40s. Right. The assisting, that, that's, they never see that ever being called, but the call is made. I don't even know what the call was. Assisting, pushing. The, I, the call that the play I, I, that's I, I made in the NFL go every day. Get the meaning of that, uh, the, the reason. Wow. So I don't think Coach Wiggins is going to love that call. But the call is made, and Brockton will have another third down and 10. So that, that takes away a great effort by uh, Jalen Campbell to get another first down. The referee's uh, uh, called uh, again, Leo, the name of that call again? Assisting. Assisting, okay. All right. Mm. So I just heard from one of the rules guys, that's something they're emphasizing this year. So it's the appropriate call. Okay. You don't see it called often, but it is the appropriate call. So Brockton in the offset eye, third down and 11. 137 left. They had a first down that would have ended the game. Jaden Campbell under center. There's the snap. The ball goes to Luke Turco. He has yep. a little room, yeah. and it's really clogged real right. fast as he moves that leg. A terrific tackle. Is that Desmond Brunskill again? Yeah. Up in the safety position. It, it certainly was. Brunskill, you, it looked like Luke shot through the gap, uh, shot right through the hole. Looked like he had something there, but Brunskill was having none of it. Big stop, and that gives New Bedford They're gonna uh, get the ball a chance back. here. So the clock is still moving. We're closing in on a minute. A minute. Fourth down and five for the boxes. The ever-important snap, and Cameron did fumble the ball last time, Orlando, on the punt. Right. So the box is, let's see if the Whalers send anyone there trying to uh, block it. I hope, you know, I hope Brockton kicks the ball out of bounds. Need a good snap, need a good kick here. So we're under 50 seconds. Brockton obviously in no rush to snap the ball. They may even call a timeout. They do. Yep. So at 48 seconds left of the fourth quarter, box is 12, New Bedford 6. What's New Bedford thinking right now, Orlando? What do they need to do? They probably want to catch the ball, get a you know a few yards here, set up a good finish for them towards the end. Uh, so Brockton looked like they had the game-ending first down that was called back on an assisting um, the runner call, and that is forcing the boxers to punt the ball at their own 44-yard line. Cameron Montero, who had to go ahead touchdown, 
on a 32-yard touchdown pass from freshman Jaden Campbell. And I might add, Leo, as you can hear, the wind is Pick blowing it and it's blowing, uh, unfortunately, not the side that we want it to go. So uh, you got to be careful here with the snap and the kick. Orlando. They're going to make fun of us at WEI for that assistant call. But <laughs> I want Shime to tell me the last time he's seen that call made. <laughs> Look it up this weekend, Shime. The last time you've seen an assistant call. So, good old WEI. And, and, and don't forget, we are Brockton homers. Oh. So Cam Montero back to punt. Good nine and Noons are back. The snap is fine. And there's yeah. a penalty. There's a flag down. Yeah, was there like an offside? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be offside. New so if that's an offside, Brockton will have a first down. Ah, there's a kick. Noons has the, call, has the ball, and that will take more seconds off the clock. Let's see what the call is here. If that's five yards, Brockton will have a first down. Oh, it's that's gonna, that. Coach Brito is going to be pulling his hair out for the next. It's going to be very that's, close because it's five yards and about a couple of inches. I'd still punt the ball from right. Brockton. I'm well, not giving the ball midfield. Of inches. The way Campbell has run them quarterback sneaks, you might want to go for it and end this game. So no, the ball. No, it's a legal procedure on Brockton. They're yeah. not going to get a offsides in New Bedford at that right. time. Right. So the legal procedure. Let's see if New Bedford makes them kick it again. Yeah. They do. That's smart. So another, you know, just a silly penalty on special teams, Orlando. Mm -hmm. A legal procedure should not happen. So the five yards will move the ball back to mm, the 38-yard line. 35 seconds left in the game. So, again, the snap and uh, the kick has They're to be. Going to have to do it again. Smart play yeah. by New Bedford making them. Right. They lost seconds. They may lose field position, but they're making them kick the ball again and snap the ball again. New Bedford will have Jerron DePiner and Zakari Nunes at about their own 36-yard line. A silly penalty by the box is a motion penalty on a punting. So Brockton with a few back-breaking penalties on this drive. Casey Rhodes, the sophomore, looks to be the gunner. That timeout, Brockton. Another timeout by the boxes. Coach Wiggins talking all over stuff with it. Looks like his special teams coach. Good timeout by Brockton. They know this is important. You got to get the snap. You well, got you got to get a good kick. And um, with 35 seconds left, it's going to be real difficult for the Whales to move the ball 65 yards. Unless Brockton right. gets beat. It's crazy. Gets beat. It, the craziest stuff has happened. But yeah. with this weather, it's going to be difficult. But we've seen Brockton lose games. What I'm saying is crazy as it sounds. This might be the biggest play of the game, the it snap is, and the kick. It is the biggest play so, of the uh, game. You're right. So Wiggins smartly takes the timeout and makes sure this goes, uh, you know, without no mistakes here. So the, 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 it was a throw and blow. That was the call by the official. Mm -hmm. So they let the play go on, yep. and then they call the play after. So the boxes, we back to punt again. New Bedford moving their guys up to about the, almost the 40-yard line. Very important snap and kick here for the boxes. 35 seconds left. For the record, I still haven't heard that call either in 40 years. So there's the snap. It's perfect. Cam Montero gets the kick away. It's low. It's going to be able to be returned. Watch out here. He's got a lot of room to the right. He gets outside. And it's a tackle, another missed tackle. So New Bedford will have 25 seconds left. And I would have liked to see them pump that ball out of bounds, Orlando, but. Right. It was a line shot of right. Perfect, to, you know, perfect, perfect punt to re-return. Yeah. So New Bedford will have 42 yards and 25 seconds. The boxes will have most people back, I'm sure. So we coming down to the wire here. New we, Bedford has that chance they wanted, so. New Bedford does have some timeouts left. So, A.J. Rivera, Brockton has three back. Four guys on the line of scrimmage. They have two to the left, one to the right. Brockton with four men on the line. There's the throw. There's the fake. He's trying to get there. J.J. Johnson. There. Oh, oh, he catches it. And it's caught. And he gains 10, 15 yards. And it yes. just missed. Right. Ahmad went for it. Couldn't get it. Joe, uh, Mr. Goodon was able to catch it and get good yardage. And uh, 16 seconds left. New Bedford. Uh, so New Bedford has the ball at the 26-yard line. 16 seconds left. Yep. It's a terrific play design. Yep. I would have liked to see Ahmad stay on his feet and make the tackle and not right. go for the ball. But during that oh. time, it's you know it's a tough play. So New Bedford has only 26 more yards left for the tie and touchdown. 16 seconds left. Jerron DePiner in the backfield. There's the snap. A.J. Rivera's back. No pressure from the box as he throws the ball deep. The ball comes out of his hands. And it is... It's Intercepted. Intercepted! Luke Turco! Wow! Off the tip! Was able to 
cons uh, conserve the ball. Desmond Brunskill Woo. looked like he had the ball. The ball's obviously slippery, and we've said his name all season. Luke Turco with the interception. Wow. So, Orlando, from Paul Walsh Field, <laughs> we're going to be home next week against the Durfee Hilltoppers. Leo Genitasio, along with the legend Orlando Galveo, Mike the Postman Simmons on the production. So we're going to finish this one up today at Paul Walsh Field. Luke's uh, second interception of the game, uh, and this one will clinch it for Brockton here in New Bedford. Brockton's going to move to two and five. Let's hope they snap. Uh, so at seven uh, seconds left, Brockton is going to have to just successfully snap the ball and take a knee, and they're going to have their second victory, Coach Wiggins' second victory, in a hard-fought game here down in New Bedford. I give credit for New Bedford. Uh, they played right to the end. Um, what a game. They've been in every football game. They're well coached. They got some tough kids. They're, they're yeah. going to be good the next few yeah, years. Yeah, and I was very impressed with uh, Mr. Goodine today, man. He had well over 100 yards rushing. So there is the knee. We're going to finish things up here today from Walsh Field again. Once again, Brockton 12, Orlando 7. See you next week. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we're going to get...